Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that you're looking at running for president. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Look, look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which badly wants you to run. I am officially running for president of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. <laughs> I think that man will be president of the United States right about the time that spaceships come down filled with dinosaurs and red cake. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> I continue to believe Mr. Trump, Trump will not be president. Donald Trump will never, ever be president. He's moderator, yeah. but parents, apparently believes that Donald Trump is a clown. President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. <laughs> We have a key race alert right now. Donald Trump now has reached the number of delegates needed to clinch the Republican presidential nomination. So right now, Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say you're not going to be president, all right? It's been fun. It's been great. I love you. But, but come on, come on, buddy. Donald Trump, while we project, will win in Kentucky with its eight electoral votes. In Indiana, with its 11 electoral votes. West Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, Kansas, with its six electoral votes. Nebraska, with its five electoral votes. And Wyoming, with its three electoral votes. North Dakota, uh, with its three electoral votes. And South Dakota, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, the state of Montana, Missouri, Ohio, Idaho, North Carolina. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Together, we will make America great again. What's up, everybody? Welcome in to Cobra Cast 199. What's up to the snake pit? How's everybody doing tonight? Boy, oh boy, another crazy day on social media. Uh, what more would you expect in the year of 2024? Nonsense is happening. Uh, Don Lemon is uh, getting clowned all over social media. Uh, President Trump gets a, I think like two very big wins today. Um, and we're going to discuss that. Obviously, the uh, judge in Georgia is protecting his fanny. and uh, But I think that that's a positive thing for President Trump, in all honesty. And President Trump got a huge endorsement today. All right? President Trump got a massive endorsement today. Just insane. Absolutely insane. Um, but yes, so we're going to talk about all of that. I want to say hello to everybody. Uh, we've already had two banger streams today. We had... Geeks and Gamers Daily, which was crushing it, which had like 4,000 people watching us on Geeks and Gamers Daily. The numbers over there keep going up. I'm actually making videos again on Geeks and Gamers, and the subs are growing. Uh, views are better. Live stream numbers are better. Uh, subscribers are growing here on the D-Day Cobra channel. Uh, live stream numbers have been great. Really appreciate all of you. It's been awesome. And then, of course, we had Friday Night Tights, and we had a banger episode of Friday Night Tights. So, yes, this is a, the third stream of the day. My social battery is getting very low. I don't know how I'm going to be able to survive, ladies and gentlemen. Three streams in one day. I just don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm supposed to go on. This is such a tough job to sit here and talk uh, and talk about things I'm interested in. Um, Cam Man says, Jeremy's making videos again. Is it 2021? That's like, we're in like 2019 uh, level is what it feels like right now. We're like 2019 mode. I'm really, really happy about how the channel is doing and how this channel is doing as well. Um, we got John Kennedy 
It says 6-3-2-15-1-9-9. That's right, baby. Let's talk games, says Helldivers 2 tonight. Let's talk about it. I'm not against that. I have to record videos right after this. Uh, Hailstorm's mad at me because uh, I, I teased playing the other night and I didn't. And Hailstorm's really mad at me. Um, I, I, Helldivers will be happening, okay? Helldivers will be happening in the very near future. I think tomorrow is probably the better day. I can set time aside and and just throw like four or five hours into it. I think that's probably what we're going to do. Brock just dropped 20 gifted memberships before we even get rolling. Holy crap. Thank you, Brock. I appreciate you. How the hell you been, Brock? Hey. Hydrate right here, Brock. Just for you. Just for you. There you go, Brock. That's just for you, buddy. I appreciate it. The Snake Pit appreciates it. Thank you, sir. Greg Kirby says, bro, Latisha James is getting sued by Trump, uh, by Trump and firefighters. Bro, call Jay. Jay, Jay's like, Jay tells me I can't call him like when he's traveling because he's such a big deal. He's got a real ego problem, man. That guy, I tell you, he just, he's, he's, he thinks he's a superstar and he kind of is. Um, Golden Nuggets for 20 says, I won't be able to super as much. I am saving for birthday gifts uh, for relatives. My medical check went okay. Uh, getting results soon to see if I'm able to function normally uh, means another operation. Uh, what an insane past five years it's been. Bro, never apologize for not being able to super chat me or anything like that. Um, I never, I don't expect anybody to super chat me um, consistently or anything like that. And like I said, there's some people that will never super chat me because they're like, this fig doesn't deserve a dime. He's sitting in front of a damn computer talking. Fuck him but I'm at least going to watch because he's somewhat entertaining or he's just retarded, whatever. Um, and, of course, and there's other people that that do a, a lot of supporting that that helps balance things out and, and helps, you know, the business move forward. But never apologize. Your health is the most important thing. And, you know, you've been updating us on everything you've been through, man. And uh, keep us posted, man. Keep us posted. But as I said, as I said, you have to come back here and give us updates. All right? You got to get through all of it. Um, Cellular Dream says, Jeremy is a fig. Chad Layton says, I took the day off just to watch this. Thanks for the excuse. You are very, very welcome. Um, Anthony says, hail the 199. Hail Jeremy. Hail chat. Trump 2024. Have you ever thought about adding more clips to the intro? Potentially. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, me and Hellstorm actually should probably talk more about that and just having like, um, oh, you mean the actual intro? I thought I was thinking like the rumble side of things. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I maybe we could honestly though. I, I, as much as like some people might be getting tired of the intro, I think other people love it. I think the goal is to get a new intro in November. That's what we're working towards. So I think we keep the intro the same until November, and the goal is to get a new intro in November. That's what we're working towards. Okay, that's the goal. Is we need an updated intro we need an updated meltdown from the left that's the goal so i think at least we have something working where we can go man let's work towards that you know what i mean so um let's see and i saw we just got a 50 a 50 says uh it's a uh, i'm a be wooed for 50 so it's 25 for me and 25 for the guy who's battling health issues look at that man See, Golden Nuggets, man, we got a great group of people here, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Is that, um, let me see, let me go back here for just a minute. Is that your first soup? That is your very first ever super chat on the D-Day Cobra channel. Um, so that, wait, this, let's say, celebrate their first super on a live stream. So is that your first super chat on any live stream? Wow. I mean, it's a, for sure it's the first one here. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Thank you so much. Um, and, uh, shout out to golden nuggets. Uh, there's Brock's 20 gifted memberships. Uh, Aurora uplink says, if I had something meaningful to say, I w it would be nice. Well, look at that. That's really nice of you. Thank you. Bird up says, I missed the second half of daily. Uh, did you run the Fortnite versus party animal poll in the chat? And if so, which one won? I didn't. I'm sorry. That was my bad. To be fair, 
we had a lot going on with like relocations and all that stuff. So um, I didn't have my whole crew there. But Ryan, I'm going to blame it on Ryan. Can we just blame it on Ryan? I'll blame it on Ryan. I'll do the poll here in this chat if you want. Let's let us get up to like, you know, let's get rolling. And I'll, uh, Eric K, if you can remind me um, as we kind of get rolling a little bit later uh, to do that poll in the chat, I can do it. I'll just do it here. I got you. I got you, Bird Up. I got you. Uh, Captain J6 says, one full year. That's crazy. We've made it this far. Thank you to the chat for the gifted memberships and to Jeremy for the good content. Hail the 199. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Uh, Celio Dream says, Jeremy, I think Matt would smoke you in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, look, we're going to talk about the Matt Walsh stuff for sure. Um, I uh, He's not. He's handling it exactly exactly uh how i expected him to handle it and um that's not a good thing that's not a good thing at all uh jay schwalbach says are we are we are we reading rumble rants we always read rumble rants i got them pulled up right here joe c for five says we're fighting our government and governments of the world who want to destroy america they own our politicians media corporations and want us to hate and fight each other hold the line y'all Absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, and there's a lot of craziness going on uh, around the world, around this country, online, on social media, no doubt about it. I mean, my intent with like the Matt Walsh situation, I'm not looking to fight with Matt Walsh, um, but he did step into a, an arena that he knows nothing about. And if anything, he he's consistently disrespected. So now he's, we'll talk about it here in a little while, but he's finding out like just how passionate uh, gamers are because uh, they're not backing down at all. PJ on Rumble says, uh, let us start off with more good news. Uh, my booby is cancer free. Woohoo. Look at there, PJ. Happy to hear that. Um, thank you for letting us know, PJ. I know you're going to be in um vegas i think i think you said you're going to be in vegas so now you are cancer free that is fantastic news uh some people in the chat said let's see they're looking for proof i didn't say that the chat did you can't blame me okay i'm just telling you what the chat said but in all honesty very happy to hear that so congratulations to you um and uh i like how i blamed it on the whole chat when there was one person that said it and i blamed the whole chat what an asshole i am all right like there's one person that said let's see and i said the whole chat i blamed all nearly two thousand people um that's a that's a shitty thing for me to do um but at least I owned it, okay? <laughs> uh, Dave Chandler for 25 says, The frustrating thing, frustrating thing about the feud with Daily Wire is how completely unnecessary it is. Their problem is that they have a cultural blind spot when it comes to games. The closest thing they have uh, to a gamer is Brett Cooper. And yeah, and that's not a gamer. Like, I have nothing against Brett Cooper. Gary is about as much of a gamer as Brett Cooper, if I'm being real, okay? Gary from Nerdrotic is about as much of a gamer as Brett Cooper, and that's just the truth of it, okay? That's just the truth of it. All right, we got to get it, and I know I've got other ones, and I'm going to get to them momentarily, um, so give me time. I appreciate you guys and your patience on all of that. We've got to jump into this story right here. Uh, so we have got... I think we need to jump... <sighs> Which one should we go? Okay, Donald Trump got a massive endorsement today, okay? Massive endorsement. Are you guys aware that Donald Trump got this huge endorsement today? To me, this is an endorsement that could... It, I think the, the presidential race is kind of decided. This is the biggest endorsement that I think President Trump could have ever asked for, okay? I mean, this is huge. This is massive. This is the biggest endorsement. This is right here shores up the election for Donald Trump, in my opinion. Uh, in all reality, I feel like this is an old video. I don't know. I feel like this is an old video, but maybe it's like, maybe he's saying the same thing he said years ago. I don't know. It's being regurgitated all over again. I have no idea. But here's the big time endorsement right here. One Dick Cheney. I feel like I've seen this before, though. I feel like it. Let's listen to this video right here. In our nation's 246 year history, there has never been an individual who is a greater threat to our republic than Donald Trump. 
He tried to steal the last election using lies and violence to keep himself in power after the voters had rejected him. He is a coward. A real man wouldn't lie to his supporters. He lost his election and he lost big. I know it, he knows it, and deep down, I think most Republicans know it. And our nation is 200. <laughs> so this has been getting the rounds. I feel like this is a, uh, so uh, that is an old one. Okay. They've been, oh, uh, the volume was low. All right, let me bump the volume up. Here we go. 146 year history. There has never been an individual who is a greater threat to our Republic than Donald Trump. He tried to steal the last election using lies and violence to keep himself in power after the voters had rejected him. He is a coward. A real man wouldn't lie to his supporters. He lost his election and he lost big. I know it, he knows it, and deep down, I think most Republicans know it. And our so yeah, I, I do, like, for some reason this has been going around, like, today. Did people start quote tweeting it again today or did the Republicans against Trump just tweet it out again? So that was for 2023 is when they originally posted this, I guess. Um, and then I saw people uh, tweeting it out again. So it's like, I feel like I've seen that one before, but it's important to show this all over again. But in all seriousness, and that was me memeing on a massive, massive uh, endorsement. But there was a pretty interesting video today from one Ben Shapiro. That's right. Ben Shapiro. Now, for the audience, I have not watched Ben Shapiro's video. All right. I just saw that it said why I'm giving Trump or why I'm giving money to Donald Trump. Now, I don't think that, and again, I am, I'm judging this on the title alone, which is what a lot of people that hate me do. All right. Fair is fair. I'm judging this on the title alone. Okay. But, I don't think that a 13 and a half minute or 13, almost 14 minute video, you need to spend 14 minutes to explain why you're giving money to Donald Trump. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, people are like, don't scroll down. These are my bookmarks. I bookmarked this, uh, this, this girl uh, that said she's turned her life around and we're going to talk about that later. Uh, so don't get don't get all crazy about the OnlyFans thing that you saw down there, but uh, yeah. So, um, but thirteen minutes and forty nine second video just to explain why you're why you're giving your money to Donald Trump. I feel like he's doing this to explain himself to his DeSantis supporting fans that are going to be extremely mad. And when you have to spend. 15 minutes nearly to explain why you're giving money to Donald Trump, the clear best person for the job. That's kind of weird. But let's listen to Benny Shapiro. Let's hear what he has to say. As most of you know, I'm voting for Donald Trump in November. I've said so many, many times at this point, but I'm not just voting for Donald Trump. Next week, I will be co-hosting a fundraiser for him. Now, this may come as a surprise to some of you. I want to tell you why. As you know, I didn't support Trump in the primaries. I don't endorse candidates in Republican primaries, but I do tell you who I would have voted for. And I told you I would have voted for Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida if given the choice. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for the reminder that you supported DeSantis because we definitely needed to be reminded that you supported DeSantis because we all were confused that uh, you were, who are you voting for? Well, everybody knows that you were supporting DeSantis. I feel like this is his chance. What I feel like he's going, this is, Every fucking time these guys have to bring up DeSantis, they have to bring up how, oh, well, DeSantis is the best person for the job, and he's the greatest governor, and he would have been the best candidate, yada, yada, yada. Jeremy Boring did it just a few days ago. They have to fucking talk about DeSantis. DeSantis was not the best fucking candidate. If he was the best fucking candidate, then he wouldn't have lost all of his support because before all of this started, DeSantis was polling somewhat close to President Trump, and he managed to lose like 30 or 40 fucking points. So the best candidate is Donald Trump. If anything, DeSantis, statistically speaking, Ben, was the worst candidate. DeSantis was statistically speaking the worst candidate, and it's not even remotely close. Explain that to me, Ben. Ben. Part of becoming president of the United States of America is running a successful campaign. Correct? Correct? Okay. Ron DeSantis ran 
one of the worst campaigns we have ever seen by a mile. So this nonsense about him being the best candidate is fucking bullshit, and I'm tired of it. But Ron DeSantis isn't the nominee. Donald Trump is the nominee. And he's facing Joe Biden, who is the worst president of my lifetime. Because Donald Trump is the nominee against Joe Biden, I won't just vote for him. I will walk over broken glass to vote for him. Actually, I will go into my own pocket to support him, which is what I'm doing. My calculus is really simple. America was better off under Donald Trump than it is under Joe Biden. Yes. At home, America was safer and more prosperous. When Donald Trump was president, we did not have an open border. We were not flooding our country with at least 7 million illegal immigrants, overwhelming our cities, leaving our country wide open to the plague of Chinese and Mexican drug cartel-backed fentanyl poisoning. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have a president who tried to use the Occupational Safety and Health Administration to force 80 million Americans to take a vaccine or lose their jobs. And my company didn't have to sue to stop it. I do appreciate what he's doing. I still, I question like a 13-minute video, but here, here would be my video, okay? Uh, I'll, it, this would be my video titled, Why I'm Giving Money to Donald Trump. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy. Uh, I'm the owner and creator of Geeks and Gamers. I uh, also run a show named uh, CobraCast199. And uh, why am I giving Don uh, money to Donald Trump? Because he's Donald fucking Trump. MAGA, let's go. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. That's, that's my video for why I'm giving Donald Trump money. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have 40-year highs in inflation and decreasing real wages. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have a federal attempt to teach children that boys can be girls and vice versa, or to force taxpayers to subsidize abortion, or to target religious institutions for the great crime of upholding traditional Judeo-Christian values. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have an administration hell-bent on stymieing the police in their attempts to fight crime, or an administration that values diversity and inclusion and wokeness above military readiness, all in the name of equity. When Donald Trump was president, we did not have American businesses preparing to have their incomes robbed from them in the name of the biggest spending programs in American history. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have unconstitutional attempts to simply wipe away student loan debt or a Department of Justice dedicated to the targeting of political opposition. When Donald Trump was president, the world was not on fire. When Donald Trump was president, we did not cut and run in the face of 8th century barbarians in Afghanistan who blew up 13 American soldiers, hunted down our allies, and reestablished al-Qaeda bases. When Donald Trump was president, peace was breaking out in the Middle East between Arab nations and Israel and Iran was in a box. We certainly did not have a multi-front hot war between Iranian proxies and American allies or American soldiers directly, and we weren't trying to pay billions in bribes to the Iranian mullahs. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have a war in Ukraine. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have China threatening imminent blockade of Taiwan. When Donald Trump was president, America was better off. Now, as I've said, I will always be honest with you about Donald Trump. He was not my first choice in the primaries. He's a deeply flawed human. I've been open in my criticism of I've been open in my criticisms of Trump on both character and policy, and I'm not gonna stop. Was that a stutter from Ben? Ben never was that like a, did they miss the edit there or something? That was a little strange. Hang on, let's go back. He's a deeply flawed human. I've been open in my criticism of I've been open in my criticisms of Trump on both character. They they missed the edit. They missed the jump cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem. It happens to everybody. But it is funny that they missed the jump cut. <laughs> and policy. And I'm not going to stop criticizing Donald Trump when I disagree with him. I always will be honest about that. And I always will. That's my job. It's the job of all Americans because Donald Trump, as a presidential candidate, works for us. But Donald Trump is the man standing between America and a second Joe Biden term. So uh, I want to be clear. I 100% support this. I'm, a, I'm glad that Ben Shapiro is doing this. I do appreciate it. I wonder what the next 10 minutes are going to have in it. Um, I, I do want to hear like what his what what are the policy criticisms that he has for Trump? What what are the real policy issues? I don't care if you think he's a flawed human being. Guess who else is a flawed human being? Ben, you. And me, and literally every other person walking the planet, Donald Trump has been investigated more than any human being in the entire world, and they can't find anything on him. And their desperation to lock him up means they are having to invent shit to get him on. Do you know how many people are that clean in their life? Because there ain't many. There are not many. And I wonder if Ben, the man who constantly reminds us of how flawed Donald Trump is, which 
that Ben that, that which Donald Trump is, but if Ben Shapiro faced the level of scrutiny and the level of investigation and the level of not being having a moment to yourself that Donald Trump does and having to travel around blue states so that he doesn't get uh, another case thrown at him. I mean, I, you're the one that's constantly calling Trump flawed. And here it is, Trump's facing uh, the most powerful and corrupt people on the planet. People that we don't even know exist are desperate to take Trump down. And he keeps rising above it at 77 years old. So is that, the, is that Ben Shapiro's only complaint about Donald Trump is that he's a flawed human being? Gosh, I, I, it just gets old. And a second Joe Biden term means America is in dire, dire trouble. It is that simple. I encourage all of you who, like me, would have preferred another nominee for the GOP to recognize this is now a binary race. It is Trump or it is Biden. And unlike in 2016, we don't have to guess at what a Trump administration will be. We also don't have to guess what a Biden administration will be. We know America cannot afford another term of Joe Biden or perhaps more realistically, a Kamala Harris term. Joe Biden is here to finish the job Barack Obama started of fundamentally transforming America into the image of the far left. That cannot happen. That's why I'm not just giving Donald Trump my vote. I'm giving him my money because this election matters. And Donald Trump must be the next president of the United States. We'll get some more on this in just one second. For Did my camera just die? My camera just died. Hang on. Why does my camera always die? Do I have another stupid software update that I have to do? There we go. All right. Sorry about that. As Ben Shapiro's ad read kicks in. With inflation on the rise, 20 bucks. Oh, my God. Ben in your freaking, um, your freaking ad reads. You know what, though? What do we say? We respect the grift around Gallon here. Gallon or something. I mean, like, really, gas is getting very expensive. But from my cell phone company, Pure Talk, you can get unlimited talk, text, plenty of 5G data for just 20 bucks a month. Pure Talk gives you the we same respect quality the grift. service as your current cell phone. We respect the grift here, okay? If I'm reacting to Ben's content, I have to give him his ad read. It's only the right thing to do, even though Ben probably doesn't like me because I'm a flawed human being. Pure Talk, with the phone and phone number you currently use, or you can take advantage of their great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Making the switch is incredibly easy. Their U.S. customer service team... No one really cares, though, right, Ben? No one cares. Smash the melee button if you're here. We have 200 people over on Rumble. We've got a whopping 20 on Kick, and we got... It looks like about 2,200 here on YouTube. Smash the melee button. We got a lot to talk about. The uh, Don Lemon situation, he went on The View. Don Lemon might be like one of the most disgusting human beings I've ever seen. Like what a snake. What a... Don Lemon is obsessed with being welcomed back into the club. He's obsessed with being welcomed back into the club. It really is amazing. It really is amazing. Let's let's listen in, though. Let's let Ben go. Just another reason why Donald Trump has to be president of the United States is the Democratic Party's decision to cater to pro-Hamasniks in Dearborn, Michigan. So yesterday, in the biggest news of the day, Chuck Schumer, who's the Senate majority leader, pathetically enough, he called on Israel to hold new elections. The reason he is doing this is because Democrats are trying to play an incredibly stupid game right now. They believe that they need to win Michigan in order for Joe Biden to win the presidency. And they believe there are enough Arab American voters who like Hamas in Michigan that if they somehow undercut Israel in its war against Hamas, they will win those Arab votes in Michigan and therefore have a shot at winning the election. Because if they lose Michigan, it's over, by the way. As the map current Time Traveler says, put your Rumble link in the description of the video because I got to open Rumble and search for you. Uh, Eric, can you drop that link to Rumble, please? Currently stands. If Donald Trump wins both Nevada and Michigan, he wins the presidency. And right now he's leading in Nevada and he's leading in Michigan. By the way, he's also leading in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. So they got a bigger problem on their hands. And, got, and therefore, voters who like Hamas. I, I want to hear what he's, I want to hear what Ben just said right there. That's important. Hamas in Michigan, that if they somehow undercut Israel in its war against Hamas, they will win those Arab votes in Michigan and therefore have a shot at winning the election. Because if they lose Michigan, it's over, by the way. As the map currently stands, if Donald Trump wins both Nevada and Michigan, he wins the presidency. And right now he's leading in Nevada and he's leading in Michigan. By the way, he's also leading in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. So they got a bigger problem on their hands than just yeah. Michigan. The Democrats are figuring that they might be able to split the baby a little bit. And what they're going to try to do here, and this has been obviously pushed by the Biden administration and Schumer is just doing their dirty work. They are trying to suggest to Jewish voters who overwhelmingly historically have voted Democrat, not Orthodox voters like me, Orthodox voters vote 
70, 30, 80, 20 for the Republicans. But Jewish voters broadly vote Democrat. The thing that they are trying to do is they're trying to say that the reason that they are distancing themselves from Israel is not because they're somehow anti-Israel or pro-Hamas. The reason they're doing this is because they just don't like Bibi Netanyahu. And what they are counting on is liberal Jews being stupid enough to believe that their opposition to Israeli policy is not about opposition to Israel, it's about opposition to Netanyahu. The reason this makes no sense on any sort of logical level, of course, is that Bibi Netanyahu is currently part of the- oh My God, is this gonna be like a, a pro-Israel kind of spiel that Ben's gonna go on now? Like... A war cabinet, that war- Like, I don't, I, I, I have nothing against that. It's, it's Ben talking about it is my problem, because Ben has, has just been insane. Like, he's lost his mind over this. And it kind of goes back to my problem is, if Israel is your number one, you know, topic, which it clearly is for Ben Shapiro, guess how Israel was doing when Donald Trump was president? But you were so focused on DeSantis being the nominee. Again, I know he's supporting Trump now, but he's doing this reluctant way of doing it, and it drives me crazy. War cabinet includes his prime opposition, Benny Gantz of the opposition party. If the elections were held today, Benny Gantz would be the president both ways. Okay. So they want to say okay. to the Dearborn okay. voters, well, sure, we're still providing some support to Israel, but we really hate Bibi Netanyahu. So you got you to believe us. We're trying he's to hold finished? him back. That's Wait, us. He's finished with the Trump topic? Really? He's not going to talk Trump anymore? Did he really just clickbait me? He, did he clickbait me? I respect it if he did. I'm going to give him a like on his tweet if he clickbaited me. Two times speed. <laughs> We're trying to, if it weren't for us, he'd just be going hog wild. And the politician say, with regard to an American to rape women, kill guns is not going he to. He clickbaited me. I'm giving him a like. I'll give you a like, Ben. All right, there. All right, you get your like. Okay, so that's his whole thing for Trump. Okay, look, at the end of the day, re regardless if it's, it's, he's being reluctant or whatever, he's supporting President Trump. And that's all I really care about. Um, it does like I hate the the way that they they obviously are saying like well he's not my first choice and I wish someone here was better but I'll take it whatever um, so yeah I get it you know whatever uh, but at the end of the day the goal is to get President Trump back in the White House and Ben Shapiro is a powerful ally in that situation another powerful ally was announced today, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Another powerful ally today. And it was none other than Scott Pressler. And Scott Pressler um, was, uh, I'm trying to pull up the article right now. I don't know why my uh, internet is so slow. But uh, if you go over to, and I don't know how much of it's going to cut off, but Laura Trump announces RNC will hire Scott Pressler to lead its legal ballot Harvesting. Look at the pop-ups on this site. Um, the Republican National uh, Committee under new chair Laura Trump announced on Friday that they will be working closely with Scott Pressler to increase voter turnout ahead of its U.S. 2024 presidential election in November. This is a great hire. Uh, the announcement was made by the RNC's new co-chair, Laura Trump. Scott Pressler is a prominent conservative activist who has become notable for registering thousands of conservative voters and teaching at voter registration workshops across the country. Scott Pressler is awesome. All right. And this is huge. This is huge right here. So let's listen right here. Yes. One of the biggest lies and the most pernicious lie, I think, that's ever been told to the american people is that 2020 was the most secure election in our lifetime oh. you you have leveled multiple you've leveled a lawsuit Wait, against open. michigan now you're saying that you are oh the, the rnc is going to invest I, big time in chase i cannot take the pop-ups like i can't do it like it's absolutely insane like i get it man you got to make money i've never put an ad on my website i've never put an, uh, an ad on my website yes one of the biggest lies and the most pernicious lie i think that's ever been told to the american people is that 2020 was the most secure election in our lifetime oh. you you have leveled multiple you've leveled a lawsuit against michigan now you're saying that you are like the rnc is going to invest big time in chasing ballots can you talk me through the structure of ensuring that let's just call it all of the shenanigans the funny business the out downright criminality the illegality and the rigging in the electoral process does not happen again in 2024 yeah, I mean, look, there are 
millions of people, I'm going to say 75 million plus Americans who still are like, what, what the hell happened in 2020? They didn't get any answers. They all wanted us to move on, but they all feel like something was awry. Something was amiss. Cause let's be honest, 81 million people were not so inspired by a guy campaigning out of his basement who could barely string two sentences together. They said, we're going to come out big for this guy. Absolutely not. No one believes that. So at the RNC, it is something that we're taking incredibly seriously. We have the first ever election integrity division. This is an entire wing of the building dedicated solely to that. So I don't, people need to understand how important this is. Like, this is what, what have we been saying? Like, what are you going to do about it? Like, we can't just sit by and allow what happened in 2020 to happen again. And this is so good. So good. I'm so happy so to hear this. So how do you do that? Right now, you just talked about a lawsuit we have in Michigan. We have, tw in 23 sa states, 78 lawsuits single-handedly to address this issue, to make it easier to vote and harder to cheat in 2024. We know about all the states who illegally changed their voting laws in 2020 under the guise of COVID. It flips some of those background, but it also adds an extra layer of protection on top of that. In addition... We now have the ability to train poll workers. These are not just poll watchers, people who physically stand in a polling location and kind of look around and maybe might be able to see something. These are people, Benny, who get to handle a ballot, who can count the ballots coming in and the ballots going out so they know what the numbers should be at the end of the day. On top of that, we are also hiring and we are asking for volunteer attorneys all across this country. We want you in a polling location near you every single minute that there is voting going on because we want to be able to address a problem immediately in real time. We cannot wait until it's too late. We also have to strike the fear of God in people who would ultimately be cheating in this capacity. Yes. If you are a person who is paid to cheat, do not do it because we will come after you. The full extent of the law will be laid on you. We will prosecute the hell out of you. It's not worth it. Don't do it. But we also have to start thinking about things like legal ballot harvesting, something we've never embraced as a party. We're going to start doing it now. I'm going to have a call uh, very soon with Scott Pressler, who is a, an amazing vote register. He has registered look at so Vinny, many people in this country. Vinny, look at Vinny. Vinny knows Scott. I've talked to Vinny about Scott. Vinny loves Scott Pressler. He's like, dude, he's the, he's the best. You know, look at Vinny. He's just smiling. I, I think he's fantastic. <laughs> I want him on our legal ballot harvesting division. We also have to embrace early voting, Benny. I know we want one day of voting in this country. It doesn't exist right now. We've got to bank enough votes going into November 5th that we're not playing catch up on election day. We need to swamp the system so it doesn't matter how many 3 a.m. drops they have or suitcases filled with ballots. There will be no question on the night of November 5th that Donald Trump is elected as the 47th president. Let's go. So unbelievably based. I got it. This is exactly the type of stuff that we need to be hearing because if the RNC can actually like operate competently and show that you're actually wanting to win and wanting to make sure that we're not just running uh, aimlessly around clueless and letting these leftists run around cluelessly, like this is the type of stuff we need. Now, credit goes to President Trump for spearheading this. And he's been talking about this for a long time that we're not going to let this happen. And now you've got Laura Trump, and she just has it together. And bringing Scott Pressler in, it's a grassroots kind of feel to it, and it's to let the people know that we're listening to you. It's, it's, it's to let the people and the voters know, like, we hear you, we hear you, and we're listening to you. This is huge. I got chills. <laughs> I got chills. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. I'm like, like, the entire team is, like, cheering and screaming, like, online. It's like, yes, Scott Pressler, please. Yeah. He's such he's an amazing. ally of the show. We love him so much. And so this will finally become real. The internet will win, and Scott Pressler will be part of the integrated process to actually save America. Yes. He is, he is the first person I thought of whenever uh, this the whole idea of the RNC was floated to me. I said, if I end up there, if I'm co-chair of the RNC, I want to bring him in. Because what a job that guy has done. Not yes. only should he be rewarded for it, but we want to give him more jobs to do up until November 5th and then well beyond. That's awesome. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Maybe the only other person at the RNC that could uh, match you and how spectacular your hair is. <laughs> That's um, true. That's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> and truly. Tr <laughs> there, you there you go. Scott's awesome. So 
Uh, yeah, we uh, we talked a little bit about getting him on the show a while back. Hopefully, we can schedule something. Um, you know, I, I didn't know a ton about Scott when you guys tried to connect me with him, but but he, you know, he followed me, and uh, I think Kristen Ova talked to him a little bit. We we're trying to get the schedule, and we couldn't get it worked out. Um, but I did follow up with him. I went ahead and personally messaged him back uh, just to let him know, like, uh, congratulations. And I'd still I'd work around his schedule if we could. Um, but, uh, yeah, totally cool, man. I'm really happy to hear that. And that's a big win. That's a big, big win. And, uh, everybody should understand the level of that because it's huge. I'm very, very happy about that. Um, okay. We have to talk about this Don Lemon situation and we're going to get to that here in just a minute, but I want to talk about another topic really quick that I saw. And, um, it's it's not some it's not a topic I'm gonna dive too deep into, but it's uh definitely it, it speaks volumes. It speaks volumes, uh, in my opinion. Dave Chandler with a fifty says it's important that the Republicans call BS on any election shenanigans as soon as they happen. Uh, no burst pipes uh, that caused the vote count to stop in Georgia. No missing ballots that uh, suddenly appear magically whenever the Democrats are losing. 1,000%, 1,000% on that one. And that's what Scott Pressler and Laura Trump, I think, are going to spearhead, and it's going to be fantastic. Um, that's really motivating right there. Everything is coming together, and I'm going to explain how I think the Fannie Willis situation in Georgia, and we are going to talk about that. I personally think that it's a, I think it's still a win for Trump. I absolutely think it is. Because what has Trump's momentum ultimately been about? It's about the system being weaponized against him. No logical thinking person can can look at what happened in Georgia today and not just go, what the fuck is going on? Are you kidding me? So we will talk about that. We will talk about that. Um, but what a what an absolute disaster that is. Um, OK, so this is another story that's a little kind of off top from the political world. But this speaks volumes, man. And this bothers me, and I confirmed this. I went over and I confirmed this, okay? Now, this is more of a nerd sphere kind of topic, but I don't. I barely talked about this, but there's some major drama going on in the world of Minecraft. There's this Minecraft YouTuber named George Not Found that was accused of, you know, sexual assault, and the story has just been messy, and crazy, and all of these Minecraft weirdos, whatever. But this is what, this happened earlier, I saw this. Mr. Beast team removed George Not Found from their Feastables Instagram post. The famous Minecraft YouTuber was recently under fire after reports emerged regarding him uh, not sexually assaulting an 18-year-old adult woman during a VidCon party last year. I like how you put not. So... They removed him from the picture. They, they actually like photoshopped him out of the picture. They photoshopped the, the dude. This is one of their friends. Now, mind you, Mr. Beast is okay having the guy that turned, pretends to be, I'm trying to be very fucking careful right now. He has a friend that left his wife and child to become a woman and Mr. Beast stood by him through all the controversy because you know why because he can't back away from him because the powers that be won't allow him to but this this guy this guy right down here in the bottom uh, of the picture was just a, accused of something that at the time of me recording this there's a thousand holes in the story and they photoshopped him out. That is insane. That's insane. So, I don't know. It, it, the whole thing's weird to me. Um, so, I don't know. Um, if you go to the IG post, you can scroll through the slide, a show where a different content creator is added each time. The last photo is gone. It looks like his page is gone off. There's no community note on this. Um, right here. I'm at my computer. Uh, uh, I see easy mode for you. 
Uh, the bit was each time you swipe, a person appears. The last photo was the one removed from the IG post. You can post slideshows and edit out certain ones. So, yeah. And there's no, there's no community note on this or anything like that. And uh, Nicholas, he's pretty deep in the YouTube drama stuff. So, yeah. So, there you go. So, he's got more context to it. I know that the, the seemed uh, different pictures or whatever, but he's got all... Now, again... That's just wild, and I went over there and looked, and I couldn't find it either. So I did look at it before, um, but again, it just comes down to like, it goes into that argument of <sighs> you're willing to stand by your friend who walked away from his family, which is fine. I'm not saying like, that's fine. You can stand by people that do shitty things, but the fact that they're trying to edit this guy out Kind of bullshit. Kind of bullshit. So, um, uh, 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 just bullshit. Yeah, not, not, so not photoshopped out, but deleted outright. Same idea. Uh, just absolutely insane, man. Absolutely insane. Um, okay, we have to talk about Don Lemon. Right here. This is from Ashley St. Clair. Don Lemon demanded a Tesla Cybertruck and $5 million in advance. Equity in X before Elon Musk canned him, sources say. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is uh, from the New York Post. Sources say that Don Lemon uh, has... Uh... <laughs> God. Now, it gets worse, okay? It gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. Because Don Lemon... Let's see. Hang on. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, Aurora Uplink says, you're saying accusations are not proof and to ruin someone's life on an accusation means anyone can be targeted by angry or malicious people of either gender or just uh, a lie or manipulation. What I'm saying is, is like, um, just because somebody gets accused of something doesn't mean you just have to jump ship on them. That's all I'm saying. And the fact that he's willing to stand by his friend that um, I think did something just that's downright disgusting to his family, but you, what, yet you stood by him, which is fine, but you're, you're not standing by another friend. It's just a weird kind of situation, man. Um, and I just think it, that's that corporate world. But anyway, I'll, I'm gonna I'll probably look deeper into that story because I'm just it is interesting. But that's a Geese and Gamer story. All right, so Don Lemon went on to the View. Okay, this is the View. Don Lemon addresses Elon Musk interview um, and end of his ex partnership. Now this is super cringe. Okay, this is super cringe. But it's necessary to get through, okay? Unfortunately, we have to get through this. Josh Johnson with those five gifted memberships. Thank you so much. Um, what? Uh, okay, so when Don Lemon got busted, all right, Don Lemon ran to CNN immediately. Elon Musk, prior to him running to, to CNN, if I'm not mistaken, Elon Musk accused him of basically just doing CNN's dirty work. And then he ran to CNN and he was obviously glowing that he basically got a story from Elon Musk. He's now going on to The View and you can tell that, that Don Lemon is doing everything in his power to get back to the cool kids table. He's, he's desperate to get back to the cool kids table. He'll do anything he can to get back there, and that's what he's doing right now. So wait, maybe you've heard this week there's some news with Don Lemon, and uh, he's here today, journalist Don Lemon. <laughs> journalist Don Lemon. Um, now, to be fair, uh, I don't see a lot of diversity up there. I see six women, so, um, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Before we go, he's having a menopausal thing. <laughs> so Don Lemon was supposed to kick off his partnership with Elon Musk mm -hmm. on the billionaire social media platform X, also known or previously known as Twitter, but next week, on uh, next week, but instead, Musk just ended up cutting ties with our darling Don Lemon after a rather tense interview session. Watch. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate 
hate speech on the platform, that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it relates I to Democrats? I don't have to answer these questions. The Great Replacement Theory as it relates to Jewish people, do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that there constantly, was... I could care less. What a snowflake. <laughs> Oh. What a snowflake. Wow. What? <laughs> well, I could well, use some please snowflakes Please welcome right now. Don Lemon. Uh -huh. uh, so, Joy, let me just say that yeah. I was determined to get a reason to have the fan is because I jumped out of the car sitting in traffic at Times Square. Yeah. Uh, no, at Herald Square. I jumped out of the car, got on the subway, and... Look how excited he is. Look how excited he is to be talking about this. Again, Don Lemon, you, this is the most relevant you will ever be for the rest of your life right here. This is the most relevant you will be. Basically, uh, just kind of tricking Elon Musk into a bullshit interview. This is the most relevant that you will be. Ran eight blocks just wow. to be with you later. <laughs> did you really? I did. I'm glad Thank you explained you. it because <laughs> TMC is going to be <laughs> TMZ, TMZ is outside, TMZ. by the way. Now yeah. yeah. Don Levin's <laughs> running down the streets of New York like a crazy man. <laughs> okay, so before we get to what happened exactly to what happened, let's back it up a bit because when you left CNN last year, Elon Musk actively courted you to be yeah. on, yeah. on Twitter, X, whatever he calls it, have you considered doing a show, he said. See, this is why, like, and, and again, I'm not saying that it, it, you got to, everybody has to learn, you know. Um, Elon Musk is a, a brilliant human being. He's accomplished uh, so many amazing things. Uh, so I'm not trying to tell you I know more than Elon because I don't. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, he reached out to a, a slime bag, um, and he will probably, now he probably regrets it, obviously, um, and I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to build this kind of platform where you have like the Tucker Carlson's and then you have the Don Lemon's, which are completely separate, but you would want both those personalities on your platform, which offers something that no other platform can have. I totally understand that. I get it. But this is why you can't deal with these far left wing people like Don Lemon. Again, this is the thing that I think Patrick Bet David is going to learn in time. You can't trust these these far left wing activists. You can't do it. Like Don Lemon is a Don Lemon, just like Chris Cuomo. Don Lemon is a lying, manipulative piece of shit that actually hurt America, hurt humanity. If anything, like it, horrible people, man, terrible people. You can't you can't do deals with people like this. On this platform, maybe worth a try. Audience is much bis bigger, said Elon Musk. But everyone knows how controversial Musk is. So I have to ask you, didn't you know this was going to end badly? He, he's, you know, Musk is not really, you know. I went into this with my eyes open. And I, look, this is just an old saying in the South. And they say, you knew I was a snake before you picked me up. Yeah. I'm not saying he's a snake, but I'm just saying that it's that is it's relative right. uh, to this. So I went into this with my eyes open. But truly, I went into it with the best of intentions. Bullshit you did, dude. You, you... <sighs> it's just so fucking aggravating to hear these people talk and lie. And it's such an obvious lie. Like, it's such an obvious lie. I, I heard your conversation just briefly about an in, about independence. I am an independent, regardless of what people think. You know, Elon Musk thinks I'm on the left or what have you. I'm an independent. I believe in free speech. Yeah. I believe... How can you believe in free speech when you were literally... Bitching at Elon Musk for more censorship. I believe in free speech. By the way, we need more censorship. I guess such a nonsensical thing to say. I believe that people have the right to say whatever they want to say, and but you suffer the consequences for it when you say it. Right. So I took them at their word. They courted me for months. Yeah. And when their new CEO came aboard, she courted me. Her, their management team courted me. They sweetened the, sweetened the deals with incentives. And I said that was the biggest and best place for me to launch a show. Um, and because you know what's happening with television now and, and yeah, what have yeah. you, it's shrinking. Yeah. But I thought, why seed Twitter or X? That's not the first time that uh, Don Lemon has looked over and told someone it's shrinking. Is one of the biggest social media platforms in the world, the biggest, one of the biggest information platforms right. in the world. Why seed that platform to extremists? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get on there and I wanted to fight it out so everyone could have a voice. Yeah, and, and they, I, were, they were basically begging you to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 they were.
And you did it even though a lot of your friends told you you were crazy. Like you. Thank you. <laughs> you like you. I did too. But so Elon Musk famously claims to be a big proponent of free speech. He refers to himself as a free speech absolutist. Elon Musk is not a free speech absolutist at all. And I know he keeps saying that, but he's not. And I love a lot of what Elon is doing. He is not a free speech absolutist. And by the way, I, I'm not like, listen, Elon Musk is the, is the richest man in the world, okay? He's one of the smartest people. He's smart. He's rich. He's accomplished. Um, he's a trailblazer. Even he still has to operate within certain rules because he's working with big tech. He's working with Apple. He's working with Google. He's doing all of those things. Just tell people that, you know, hey, I, 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 he can say, like, I personally believe in free, free speech, but there's still, like, rules that I have to play within on these platforms. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I get it. Like, me, I believe in free speech, but I have, like, a website. I have a Discord. I have uh, Facebook groups, uh, whatever. Like, I have to operate within the rules of the platforms that I'm on. That's just how it is. Doesn't mean I have to like it. But my, but my personal belief is, my personal belief, he advertises Twitter as a free speech platform, and it's just not true. It just isn't. It's better than it was, much better than it was, but it's not free speech. It just isn't. And that's fine, but just admit that it's not free speech as much as you would like it to be. He calls X the digital town square, yeah. and he willingly agreed to this yeah. interview that you asked for uh, and said that there were no restrictions. Mm -hmm. So what exactly happened? How, what set him off? And then he sends, what, this terse text to, to your agent saying, contract, contract is canceled. canceled. What was your oh, reaction? The law doesn't really work like that, Elon. Yeah. Go well, ahead. All right, we, yeah, we'll talk about yeah. that, yeah, because there's a lot going on about that. What happened, really, look, I would say that that is, um, that's a good question for Elon Musk because it, he knows who Don Lemon is. Mm -hmm. He knew who I was. He asked me to come on the platform. He offered incentives and money. They agreed to a deal. They flew me out to Las Vegas to announce this at CES. They trotted me out in front of clients, in front of advertisers. I went to the, to the, ex, the Twitter op. And that, to me, is what it was probably all about. Um, that, is, that is what it's all about. I think Elon saw an opportunity to balance out a lot of the criticism he was facing um, because of all of the um, negativity he got for being so, you know, pro-Tucker and pro-Daily Wire and pro-right-wingers and all of that. So bringing Don Lemon out, it's like, hey, guys, look, we're offering a different perspective. Uh, instead of listening to this clown, let me just fast forward because there's another clip of the eel uh, right here, right here. This is what, we're, this is what we want to get to. Do you believe that women and minority pilots are inherently less intelligent and less skilled than white male pilots? No. What an insane question. What an insane question. First rule, first rule of dealing with a far leftist. If someone asks you a question like that, there's no need to continue the discussion. There's no need. None. I've had people... YouTubers or whatever that aren't necessarily like in my sphere, but they're also not like far left wing YouTubers or something like that. And I've had private conversations and they'll say something like, well, I mean, so you have a problem with forced uh, diversity, correct? Like, yes, you know, I don't like when forced. So, but it's not that you, do you have a problem when there's a woman in a video game? I immediately just like, <sighs> It's the dumbest fucking question on the planet. And when someone asks me that question, I immediately lose interest in continuing discussion. Do you have a problem when women or black people are in a video game? I I'm out. I'm out. There's like, at, at that point in time, if you're asking me that question, if you're asking any part, like logical person that question, there's no need to continue the discussion. It's over at that point. And that's, that's what Don Lemon has done right here. Do you believe that women and minority pilots are inherently less intelligent and less skilled than white male pilots? No, I'm just saying that we should not lower the standards for them. But 
there's no evidence that standards are being lowered when it comes to the okay. airline industry. You've repeatedly said that there's no evidence that standards are being lowered, and watch the replies showing all the evidence that it is. Replies, replies though, on social media or on Twitter are not necessarily fact and evidence. No, that's, they will just, that's people's they will, opinion. They will cite all okay. the, all no, he's talking about the people that cite these statistics from places that are verified. Fucking hell, Don Lemon. You can tell Elon's pissed off at this point in time. Look, the reply, we'll in the replies to this, you will see how often the, this, the, the information is cited showing that indeed there are significant uh, cases where uh, standards are lowered. <coughs> oh, so he just believes conspiracy theory. Well, Explain. I can't wait to watch that whole interview, but that's the end of that. I apologize for all the people that I probably ran off by having Don Lemon on screen far too long. But yeah, man, I mean, that was a that was a wild, wild situation uh, with watching Don Lemon. Just uh, the I can't I'm, I'm actually interested. I am interested to see what that interview is like, because I feel like that I feel like that interview is going to be absolutely crazy but with that said all right uh what is this i haven't seen this never forget don lemon had a complete meltdown over a meme on air really this is from alx let's see this I, I don't here we go in addition to all the lies and all the blustering at tonight's rally trump's war room posted a meme on twitter today showing trump as a supervillain thanos from the Marvel Avengers movies, <laughs> dispatching his Democratic en enemies. Take a look at this. Yes! I am inevitable. On this solemn day, I'm, I recall <laughs> that the first order of business <laughs> What, what are we, in junior high school? Like, what the hell? Is, what is this? <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> I, I cannot believe that I'm even having to report this on the news. <laughs> this is, cr this is crazy. <laughs> This is literally crazy. Are you people insane? Are you, are you insane? Go ahead. Troll the Democrats on Twitter. Do this stupid, silly, you know what? Play this stupid, juvenile meme game. Whew. History won't record this mean, stupid crap. But yes, history will, will record this. The seriousness of what is happening. That today is the day that the House of Representatives in the United States of America introduced articles of impeachment against President Donald J. <laughs> Trump, the President of the United States of America, for committing high crimes and misdemeanors. Oh my God, that was fantastic. I, we have to watch that one more often. That was just great. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen that one in a long time, so we got to save that one uh, for future references right there. Um, it looks like uh, it looks like uh, one eight hundred Danky is working on a Matt Walsh video. Uh, so <laughs> this is a. Uh, 1-800-DANKY. It's got a 199 hat back here in the back. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what, what happens with that one. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what happens with that. And I kind of feel like Matt Walsh has the same exact view of like, um, like gamers and memes as like Don Lemon. You know what I mean? Like I feel like Matt Walsh is going to have the same exact view of that. Uh, <laughs> because I mean, Matt Walsh is really like, what did I say? What did I say? I said he's not prepared for what's about to happen. That's what I said about Matt Walsh. And 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 what I meant by that is he's going to get trolled bad by gamers. 
He's going to get trolled really bad. All right? And this was his response today. I have to say, I've, uh, I've been the target of some extremely unreasonable backlashes in the past. But this one is probably the most ridiculous yet. This time, people are mad that I talked about an issue in the news. Apparently, I have no right to discuss it because I'm not in the club. Truly the dumbest outrage I've ever, ever encountered in my life. And man, is that really saying something. So he's really having a tough time. He's really having a tough time. And I responded with this. And I said, man up, Matt. And that's an old Gamergate meme right here. But I was like, just man up, Matt. Like, if you can throw the opinions over to the internet, but then you want to cry when the internet throws opinions back over to you. That's not how this works, Matt. You threw the opinions, and now you're mad because people are throwing opinions back. That's, the, that's, that's how the internet operates, Matt. That's exactly how it works. And I even talked about this earlier. Where I said, let me find it. I played the clip for Matt to say like, oh, he's uh, Jeremy. or He's saying people are saying I can't talk about it. I didn't because according to Matt Walsh, no one was talking about this until he's talked about it. Now, I'm being very sarcastic when I say that. He didn't say that per se, but he definitely alluded to the fact that this is a problem that has not been discussed until now. Now it's finally being discussed and people are aware of it. And it's like, that is not the take you should have had. And I'm going to break down exactly why I have a problem with that and what he could have said. I don't have a problem that Matt Walsh is talking about a very serious problem that has been going on for a long time. I'm mad because he still has the dismissive nature that he always has had. I said it. It's fine that he's talking about it. I'm happy that he's talking about it. And someone gave this perfect analogy. Bro stepped into a Modern Warfare 2 match and can't figure out how to shoot, aim, or why he's getting 360 no-scoped by the professionals. Gotta know the territory you dive in, Big Matt. That is so fucking accurate. It's so accurate. Like, this is, this is, you are in the Thunderdome now. You are there with the gamers, Matt, okay? It's not, you don't get there and talk shit about gamers and, and them just go, oh, so, no big deal, no big deal. That, that's not how this goes, okay? So this is not a good situation for him. Um, now, what my recommendation would be is to reach out to someone in the gaming world that you know or that you're familiar with and have a conversation with them. Have a conversation and have a little humility. Have a little bit of going, you know what? I've been pretty dismissive of this in the past. But I feel that now that I see this in a different perspective. I understand how important this is to the culture, and I understand that conservatives have kind of dismissed this for a long time, and I think that now um, we need to take a different approach to this. Gamers would, would, you know, absolutely, absolutely just be like, all right, no problem, bro. No problem. That's what they would do. That's what they would do. So, you know, it is what it is. Um crazy situation with Matt Walsh and <laughs> we will continue to, to monitor it and see if he continues to, you know, have these like, again, going off on Twitter and talking about how you've never, I've never faced anything like this. This has been the worst thing I've ever faced in my life. That's, that's not going to do you any favors at all. It just will not, that will not work in the long run for sure. Um, thank you guys for being here. Uh, great, great crowd tonight. And uh, it looks like the rock had a really good uh, segment tonight on um, WWE, so I'm going to have to check that out. I Since I do like all of you, okay? I, 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 I do like all of you, okay? And since I do, I've got a present for you, chat. I did make you kind of sit there and, uh, you know, you, you had to suffer through Don Lemon and all of that, so I, I feel that you deserve a little bit of respect. That's my, that's my, I think you deserve some respect. What do you think, chat? So here we go. Here we go, chat. This is just for you, chat, okay? Hang on. Here we go. This is just for you, chat. Here we go. Sydney Sweeney here. There you go. So there's Sydney Sweeney right there, okay? Uh, just because we love the chat, okay? Just because we respect the chat, 
Um, we just wanted to pay you back for, you know, the, um, <laughs> the somebody said we deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the chat going crazy. <laughs> so yeah, and listen, this is a very educational video, uh, very respectable, um, and yeah, <laughs> zooming in. <laughs> I mean, I have like a ninety-five percent male audience here, so you know, uh, but the male audience, uh, you know, I'm sure they respect. Uh, they respect. Is, I think so. There you go. All right. I'm only sorry for having about that video. What's that? Jeremy, oh, the only oh, the... bad thing about the video video, you go to the end. She's getting into a vehicle with a dude in a dress. Yeah, she. Well, she was at like I think that was like some like glad fucking conference or some bullshit like that. You know what I mean? I think that's what it was. Um, okay. If I'm not mistaken, well, you can uh, play it again and see for yourself. Uh, if you want here, it. let's see. Eh, you know what? Should we play it again just to watch for research purposes? Research purposes. Okay, let's see. All right, just for research. Just for research. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can do it. Um, somebody said a way to ruin it. <laughs> All right, so this is just for research purposes. Okay. Um, we're just checking it out to see if there's a a dude in a dress. Apparently, is is what we're looking for here. Um, yes, for research. Yes. All right. What the hell is even that? Holy crap. Okay, I got questions for you, Eric. Why were you looking at a dude in a dress when Sidney Sweeney's there? Can you explain yourself? Well, when uh, I gave you the video, uh, I, had to, uh, I, uh, I had to inspect this video multiple yeah, yeah. times. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, got you on that one. Got you on that one. So not too bad. All right. So <laughs> that was good research, though. Uh, Varanid for 20 says for the cause. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Hayden Wayne for 20 says, remember Dick Cheney accidentally shot someone in the face with birdshot while hunting? Somebody's whose name, uh, somebody whose name I don't remember off the top of my head, but they reportedly have been arguing. Who knows what really happened? Yes, I remember that uh, very much so. Uh, Hayden Wayne says, uh, Don went into the Musk interview with the best motive for his cult. That's what he meant by went into it with the best intentions. The best intentions for the benefit of his cult. I totally agree with that. Don Lim is just, uh, yeah, man. Again, temporary bump he's going to get from this. This is going to be long. Like, this is the... This is the most traction that he's he's going to have, uh, period. So we have Jay Schwabach in the house with a $25 super chat and says, uh, or a rumble rant, you know Dick Cheney believes that Trump tried to steal the election by putting down his pants. Uh, Cheney believes that big bulge is the election, uh, not the true erection. Suck it, Cheney. What the hell are you talking about, Schwabach? Uh, Schwalbach for 25, like Don Lemon, I demand 500 Dan Vask, uh, dollars and a Tonka truck. Uh, the all steel one, not the plastic shit, or I will, f uh, follow you on X. Oh shit. I don't have an X account. That didn't go as planned. Yeah. Why don't you have a Twitter account? I don't call it X. Maybe some point I will call it X, but not at this point in time. Not at this point in time. Uh, Justin Watkins for nine ninety nine says, "As a gamer, I br briefly briefly rose up yesterday, but had to sit back down because of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Is awesome. I respect that. I respect that. Uh, looks like uh, MCU fan is here. Apparently, uh, East Coast Toasty Boy says, I think the new intro needs a Mark Hamill compilation. It would it would have been nice if you met him at a con already and recorded your." Uh, uh, your spiel and ended with the picture uh, you take with his face laughing my off ass. Uh, yes, it would be awesome. Daniel Link says, Ahoy, Jeremy. Uh, I was too late on my FNT Super, but I hear that the G.I. Joe Transformers image comics are good. What is the best spot to start with this new run? Hail, chat, and Trump. Uh, Vivek, VP, 2024. Let's go. Um, yeah, I have them. Do I still have? Yeah, I have the... So... The G.I. Joe comic run is really good right now. 
Um, I haven't I haven't caught up on them yet, but I would start start with Cobra Commander number one. Cobra Commander number one. Start with this one. It's fantastic, um, and I'm really enjoying this GI Joe run a lot. So yes, Cobra Commander number one. Um, get Duke number one as well. But they're really really good. I haven't read the Transformers one yet, but yeah, man, that's uh, it's really good so far. Dave Chandler says Ben and others don't know it. Uh, but when they continue whining about DeSantis, it's uh, the dream of DeSantis more than anything they're clinging to. It's hard to blame them. The man had real promise. He did have real promise. Uh, he did. Um, but he quickly ruined that. Real Look, man, there's Ron DeSantis is peaked in high school, Ron. I mean, it, Florida was his high school. He peaked in high school. And that's... I don't see a scenario in 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 a world where Donald Trump will become the 47th president of the United States of America and dominate the Republican Party. I don't see any scenario where DeSantis comes back from that. So he's peaked in he's peaked in high school run. That's what he is. And Florida was his high school. I don't see him coming back from this. Munchy Ninja says, uh, you should check out Benny giving it to Destiny and Pierce Morgan after Destiny said Donald Trump was demonic. I've seen some clips of that. I haven't I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Destiny just, I don't know much about Destiny, but it's someone that I just don't think I would enjoy talking to. Uh, it seems miserable. Um, but hey, he's a uh, very uh, people. He's got his own following and he's always willing to talk to people. And that's, more than most can say that don't agree with me and a lot of people. So the fact that Destiny is willing to talk to people, I, I give him credit for that. I give him credit. Um, Dave Chandler says, I, kept say, I keep saying it. Elon's purchase of Twitter X isn't uh, what he's going to be known for when the history books are written. His work with SpaceX and Starlink are what will change the world as we know it. Yeah, I mean, Elon Musk is just doing unbelievable stuff all around the, uh, the, the world uh, for humanity. And... Um, you know, I uh, I think you're right about that. Josh says, uh, for 10 says, when uh, suppress the other side and label everything uh, they say, when they supp when suppress the other side and label everything they say as hate speech, of course, when the other side finally gets a voice, you are going to label that as a rise in hate speech. 1,000%. Dave Chandler says, keep in mind, Matt Walsh is the guy who made the What is a Woman movie. For the Daily Wire, he thought the craziness of the trans movement prepared him for anything. Then he decided to piss off gamers. And the documentary What is a Woman is a great documentary. It's a great documentary. Um, Hans Gruber says, Jeremy uh, never joined a channel or made a super chat, but I got to support those who support what I believe. Well, thank you. Tell Matt to go back to QVC and sell OxyClean. Hail 199, yippee Kaye motherfucker. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's really nice. Thank you. Um, Lord Teradax says, Sorry, I missed past streams. YouTube's been hiding streams like the figs they are. Hail the 199 and the Snake Pit. Thank you for that member message, brother. Appreciate it. Greg Kirby with the Get the Membership. Thank you. Um, mm -mm. Bruce says, D-Day Cobra. Hey, Jeremy. Hell, I'm happy to be here with you guys. Uh, you're my entertainment. I even started posting on X because of you guys. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, man. I Twitter's been fun the last few days with all the craziness going on. And there's been a lot of stuff uh, to kind of uh, go over. I do want to pull up this video really quick that I was talking about. I, I'm just going to be honest. I've seen this discussed, and, and I don't know, man. I, I don't know what to believe here. So this is this, uh, this girl that she, she rose to fame from being on the Whatever podcast, and, and she was an OnlyFans model, Okay. And this video has been going all over the internet, okay? Th this, this video has been all over the internet. And this is, I, I don't know what to believe. I, if, if you're gunned to my head, I don't think I believe her. But I think that's kind of wrong because if she truly has turned her, her life around, I, I kind of respect that. But I don't think I believe her. So let's just listen. Uh, of course, Twitter being Twitter. Why is Twitter freezing up on me? Of course, Twitter's freezing up on me. Let me refresh really quick. Uh, and Disco Cobra has a 50. 
that we got to get to. Give me just a second, Disco Cobra, and I will get to that. Um, why is Twitter like always freezing up on me? All right, here we go. I think I got it. I'll get to your 50 here in just a minute, Disco Cobra. Here we go. Here we go. So really quick, I have a couple things to address, and I just need you to listen to me. So I've had quite a few people reach out to me, comment, you know, just truly curious about what and why I changed. So, so listen, I was a pastor's kid for almost all my life. I grew up in church. I was always in church. You know, I was also homeschooled. So my life truly felt like a cage. And I'm not saying Christianity. Uh, yes, Jessica, this is really the same girl. This is that same girl that went mega viral um, and everything. She went mega viral and everything is a cage. I'm saying religion was the cage. I was a Baptist, you know, I was a Baptist pastor's child for the longest time, right? Me and my family did not have a good relationship and I'm the middle of five children. So I'm talking about my other brothers and sisters and my parents. It just truly felt like such a cage. I was a very rebellious child, like sneaking out when I was like 16 years old. I was like, I was just going the wrong way, right? Which mega viral clip, when she was on the Whatever podcast, she was making all of these references about, I'm going to try to be as PG about it as possible. She just made a lot of comments about the things that she does uh, sexually with people, and she was going overboard, and she has an OnlyFans, and she'll talk about that here, and she was like the one of the top OnlyFans uh, accounts. And apparently she still has the account open. So about four years ago, I started my OnlyFans because I think truly it was out of pure rebellion. And tr and like, honestly, I'm such a like independent person that I never felt the need for a man to provide for me, like have a man in my life to provide for me. Um, so I started OnlyFans about four years ago and I don't need no man, don't need no man climbed to top 0.01%. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that the devil can truly give you things in this life. He has a budget though. He can only go so far. So a couple million. Okay, great. The devil can do that sometimes, right? But I truly have gifts and talents. I just did not use them in the right way. And I'm reaching out to anyone who's like questioning what they should do in their life. And I turn to corn. That's what we're going to call it, okay? So this is just me sharing my personal, personal experience with you. So I reached out and did corn for four years. Um, and I showed myself all over the internet. I said crazy things on podcasts. If you don't know the I Love Cheating podcast. Um, and so I met this person who's now my partner. And he truly showed me God's love. He was sending me Bible verses, praying over me, and we were just friends. So like the Holy Spirit was truly working and moving, but I was in such a rebellion against it because I was like, God doesn't love me. I've had to work this hard for this many years because no one cared about me. My family didn't care about me. Christianity is a cage. It's not Christianity. It's religion. Religion is the cage. And unfortunately, I didn't have like good role models growing up. My parents, my siblings, I didn't have good friends. But you said your dad was a pastor. That's what I don't understand. You said your dad was a pastor and you rebelled against that. But now you're saying you didn't have good role models growing up. I don't really, unless I'm missing something there, I don't really understand what she means by that. I truly fell into darkness and I was, like I said, I was top 0.01% creator. Like that is crazy. That is a crazy milestone to reach in that industry. It's n like, <sighs> it, 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 I guess there is something to be said for reaching the top of the, as you want to call it, the corn industry. But if you're at this point in your life, I don't know how that's something to even have any kind of like appreciation for, if that makes sense. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying there's anything. I, I am not judging. I don't judge people on anything they do. OK, I have no judgments on that. I don't I, I'm not that type of person. I'm just saying that this particular person. She went so viral it like a year ago. 
And she uh, probably still is making millions and millions of dollars on OnlyFans as we speak. And I've seen a lot of people sharing this video out going, good for her, good for her, this is great, I love this. And I'm just going, is she really though? Like, do we, like we live in the internet age and she is very performative. She was always performative. And this feels like this uh, could be more performance. I hope I'm wrong. So I made what I made. I did what I did. But I want to share you, share with you guys the truth of it all. Because I am... Like, case in point, I'm reacting to it right now in front of 2,300 people that... Are, and then Rumble's got more people over there. That a, a lot of people here may not have ever heard of her, and now they do. That's the point. Now giving it all up for Christ. I am now truly a believer. I would never take it back. God radically saved me from this darkness. And let me tell you again, the devil has a budget, but God does not. God literally made you. He made this world. He made the heavens. Like what makes you think that God can't bless you with anything, but the devil will give you these things that trip you up and money in front of your face and these worldly friends, your family that doesn't, isn't there for you, you know, but don't be discouraged because God has a better plan for your life. And let me tell you, I have felt and started living that plan. And since then, the money, the fame, the Gucci, Louis, whatever bags, the shoes, the clothing, the huge trips that I've taken doesn't matter because at the end of the day, do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? And my soul, I'm sorry, but it's not worth going to hell for at all. And God loves you so much that he's willing to give you everlasting life. You need to understand that your life is very temporary here on earth. And we all have a mission. And that's to preach the word of God. Okay? I love you guys. I just wanted to clear that up and share a little bit of my testimony. But there you have it. Please be nice in the comments because just remember, you are not here to judge others. God is here to judge not you. So please, please be nice, be kind, be loving, bear the fruits of the spirit. I love you guys. I love you so much and God bless. So there you go. I, I, I'm, I'm so torn. I'm so torn. I, I obviously hope that she's not lying um, just because I think that would be such a terrible thing. Um, but I, 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 I don't know, man. It, it, it okay. Uh, uh, do, do you, be, do you believe her? Um, do you buy it? Do you buy it? Let's see. Do you buy it? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you buy the story? Polls in the chat right there. It's not because, I mean, I see, I see stories about like people all the time, but it's like when you come from that world and it's such a quick turnaround, I don't know, man. Hmm. I, 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 I hate, I hate to judge somebody who's potentially turned their life around and, you know, found, uh, you know, God and everything like that. I have, I don't know. I do not like judging people. Her in particular though, I saw so many people reacting to this positively and my gut feeling was like, I don't believe this. I don't feel this is genuine. And maybe it is. And if that if it is genuine, then more power to her. But I, I should and I was like, should I even comment on this? Because I might look like an asshole by, you know, questioning her. But you know, it is what it is. And according to what people on the internet are saying, her OnlyFans is still active right now. It's still active. And I think she commented and said that she's slowly deleting stuff. It's like, that's not, that you, you don't have to slowly delete anything. You can shut everything down immediately. So, hey, you know, part of the discussion. People are like, you're showing her grift by reacting. Well, yes, um, I'm getting my grift and she's getting her grift. Um, Disco Cobra says, uh, let's see, where's it at? Oh, man, there's two of them there. There's too much there. Uh, hang on, let me find this. Uh, oh, I got to end the poll. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, all right. So 70, 30, 70 and 30. Disco Cobra for 50 says, yeah, this woman might still be 
playing the other side, though, wouldn't be surprised if she still actively has an OnlyFans. Then I don't believe her for a second. But if she stops doing it, then maybe. Uh, Kate Von D recently got baptized. Uh, she threw away her books. Yeah, I mean, it's um, like Hulk Hogan, you know, got recently, um, Hulk Hogan got recently baptized and and saved and all of that. Now, um, you know, Hulk Hogan, if you follow professional wrestling in, in any capacity right now, I mean, Hulk Hogan has had a history of just lying about everybody, all right? Like, just lying. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. And um, so I, I uh, with Hogan, like as much as I've been following him and as much as I've been, um, you know, like a fan of Hulk Hogan over the years, he truly, truly is a liar and a manipulator. But with that said, he's a, a very like, I, I don't know what it would be like to be Hulk Hogan. Uh, and see all of your friends that have died over the years, and he's still here. And, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, I think he probably is genuine, to be honest. I really do. Um, and I've never really questioned that with Hogan, um, with everything, because at his point in his life, with everything he's been through, I, I, I would think that he probably um, is genuine on that. But, you know, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, okay, let me get caught up on some of these Super Chats. Let's see. Uh, damn it. All right. Do, do, do. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Oh, there's Disco Cobra's other. Um, where are we at? Uh, how much horsepower your Mustang putting out? I'm just curious because I'm getting ready to get a muscle truck. Uh, 89 Chevy 2500 with a 383 stroker engine. Uh, not sure I'm ready for it, but it is pretty nice. Only uh, wants around 15K for it. Not too shabby. Not at all, actually. I haven't had uh, mine. Uh, I don't know how much horsepower mine has. Uh, I haven't had it tested since I bought it. I, I think stock. Uh, the, so I have a 2013. Stock, I think it's like three 300 horsepower stock. Um, there's been some some modifications on mine, I, but I haven't. I actually might find that out, though. I might get, get it tested. So, um, But I don't... Um, I don't, so I'm 45 now. Uh, I've used to do a ton of drag racing when I was younger. I've had my license suspended like three or four times. Um, never been in a wreck, knock on wood, never been on a wreck. Um, but I, um, I'm not really into like, like my car goes fast, uh, but I don't race. I have all these fucking retards uh, pull up to me and, um, you know, they're souped up foreign cars always with their, uh, the the rice burner uh sound on them and they're like all trying to you know fucking like oh race me because my car is so fucking loud um but i don't care about all that anymore i just like cruising and i like to hear the rumble of uh you know like uh i, I don't get into the racing aspect anymore uh long gone from that one all right great tang with the gifted d day cobra membership thank you um Tinhead for 20 says, just because her dad was a pastor doesn't make him a good guy. My mother remarried a pastor uh, she was having an affair with, and he was mentally and physically abusive towards me and my brother. Being a pastor doesn't mean shit. Well, I agree with not being a pastor. Being a pastor doesn't mean shit. <clears throat> I'm not, I, I, or like, what? Oh, God, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. Um, I don't want to, you know, um, get into the religious aspect of it because I don't try to talk about religion. Um, but like the church element, like going to church, I grew up Southern Baptist and, you know, I've been through that whole thing and I don't really like the whole church element because while everybody was not hip, hip like hypocritical, there were so many hypocrites in church. It was so many. They'd come to church every day. They would put on their Sunday best. They'd have pretended everybody and church was their friend, and when you know them personally, you know that they're just full of shit, and they don't really care about half the stuff that they act like they care about in church, so that organized aspect of it always drove me crazy, and it's like, you know, my, uh, yes, yeah, Southern Baptist upbringing is rough, 
But for me, it's just a very personal thing. You know what I mean? And I try to keep it from that perspective. I do like Trump's answer. <laughs> Have you ever heard Trump's answer uh, about the Bible? Uh, Trump Bible. Trump had the best best answer I've ever heard. All right. Uh, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> uh, here it is right here. It's on Facebook. God, I haven't been on Facebook in forever. How does Facebook even work? I can't even unmute. Hang on. <laughs> um, Facebook's still loading. God, why is Facebook such dog shit these days? All right, here we go. I got it now. All right, so this is uh, Trump's the best, dude. Full screen. All right, here we go. Here we go. In the Bible, you've been talking about how it's your favorite book, and you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal, so I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse I, that I, means I a lot to you that you think about or cite? The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible. I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. Have you ever read the Quran? Do you have a view of that? I, as a I have not. I have not read What's it. What's your view of that as a, as a piece of important <laughs> world history? Well, it's certainly a piece of world history, and uh, lots of things are happening, but it's, uh, it's not something that I have a lot of interest in. I would like to find out what's <laughs> happening, why there's hatred, why there's... Probably equal. That's my favorite fucking answer ever. I joke uh, very much so. Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible... <laughs> Probably equal. <laughs> if it wasn't Trump saying it, it'd be so cringe. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just... <laughs> probably uh, equal. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It's so... F oh, my God. It's so fun. He's so funny. He's so funny. Um, goodness gracious. But I will say, uh, actions speak louder than words, for sure. And while it is funny to meme on Trump for that, if I'm looking at what Donald Trump has done um, and what he's been through and where he has to go, it, it, it is impossible for me to believe that you know, some higher power is not involved with what is going on with Donald Trump. That's just the truth. I refuse to believe that there's not something going on that's that's far beyond our grasp and understanding. Um, and that doesn't mean that he's the central person. I mean, there's a lot of people that are probably operating from that perspective. But with what he's going through and what he's willing to put up with and the fact that some of the most powerful forces on this planet are gunning for him every single day, and the man just continues to move past it, and uh, I, I firmly believe that. I, I truly do believe that, 1,000%. And uh, But like I said, it's funny, it's memeable, it's laugh, you laugh at it, because of course you do, but uh, when you cut through all the BS, that's what I believe, 1,000%. Uh, let me see where we're at here. As is wonky eyebrows, says, MCU fan is a Melanie Mac word. Hail Jeremy and the 199. Darth Racer for 10 says, Good news, Jeremy. Ben Shapiro will co-host a fundraiser for Trump next week. He's officially on the Trump train. Yes, and listen, as we continue to um, move into everything that we're moving into with the election, um, I'm 100% willing to put my differences aside uh, and just support Ben Shapiro. If he's going to support President Trump, that's, that's all that really matters to me. Um, Chad Layton says, beware of false profits for $10. Thank you, sir. Um, let's talk game says works for me. Start off, uh, on the robots. Uh, their quests are easier. I oh, was talking about, uh, hell divers. Jeff Atkins says, uh, I will never super chat you. Sorry to hear that, man. One day I'm going to get Jeff Atkins to super chat me one day. It'll happen. I don't know what day, but there's going to be some day where I say something so unbelievably funny 
or I'm going to boom or something, and Jeff Atkins is going to super chat me. The tactician musician says, here's my 199 entry fee plus one cent. Thank you so much. Alan Tanasi says, I heard Ben Shapiro doesn't travel on private jets. He just uses underground tunnels, scanning in, hail the 199, hail the 199. You know, I, uh, so uh, I rented a vehicle today for my Vegas trip because, as you know, I don't like to fly on a normal, under normal circumstances. And now with what's going on, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I did consider flying to Vegas because of the time and how much, like, it's going to cost me so much money and time to drive from Orlando to Vegas. I guess it would be Pensacola to Vegas, but um, I just can't, man. Like, this whole DEI bullshit that's going on and planes uh, missing parts and wheels falling off and all of that shit, like, I just can't, man. Like, it would literally be the difference. Like, it's going to take me, like, I don't know, 20, 30 hours to drive one way. And it's going to take a lot of time out of my schedule, a lot of energy, and a lot of money and gas. And I rented uh, I rented an SUV. So, uh, and that was pricey, but I can't do it, man. I am not going to fly. I'm not going to fly. Can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. So, I, I like driving. So, I'm looking forward to the road trip. But it will take me. I've scheduled my drive to be on the weekends. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, so that's April. Hang on. Let me see. Let me give you the date really quick. So so the Vegas meetup is April. Where is it at? I think it's 9th and 10th. 10th and 11th. Yeah, the April 10th, 10th and 11th. 11th. Yeah. Yep. The 9th is the film thread. Okay, yeah. So 10th and 11th is the uh, FNT stuff. And I'm probably that co So on the 5th, which is April 5th, if there is a Cobra cast, it will probably be a Cobra cast with me driving. I will probably be uh, uh, driving when I do Cobra cast. And on the 12th, that Friday night, probably me be driving. Um, so just keep that in mind. I I'll obviously talk to you guys about that as we get closer for sure. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Alan Tanasi says, um, I heard Ben Shapiro's sister has an amazing pair of eyes. That's just what I heard. Never seen them, so I can't confirm. <laughs> um, let's see. Heritus says, uh, the nocturnal Greek freak here. I am agnostic, and I still pray for Trump to win. We were never closer to global peace during my lifetime. 1,000%. 1,000%. David says, Pressler is the best thing they can uh, do. They need to get some uh, DAs to start suing too. 1,000%. Rye the guy uh, and get rid of the damn drop boxes. Yep. Alan Tanasi says, I met Scott Pressler in Los Angeles in 2021. Dude is a legit 6'5". Good dude. I can confirm 100%. Modalish says, Don Lemon making retards look like Einstein. Uh, and then Don Lemon looks like AIDS, Steve Urkel, which is funny because he probably has AIDS. Rusty Part says, okay, here's my uh, OnlyFans budget for a second night. Happy? I'm only worth $250? I mean, I'll take it. Just saying. Uh, Aurora Uplink says, Don Lemon, uh, Snake in the Grass, will be off the air soon. Uh, Snake, uh, Solid Metal Snake says, watching The View is worse than going uh, through... Uh, let's see. I don't know how do you say that torture, but uh, I need to preserve my brain cells. Um, Bird Up says, uh, Bird Up thinks that Don Lemon referring to himself in the third person makes him pretentious twat. Ten Head says, Play it again, laughing my ass off. Aurora Uplink says, I feel like the way the school system has taken our society the past fifty years has slowly become worse and worse, and we are a product, all of us. I mean, I can totally see that. Jester of Roanoke says, uh, Lemon is the embodiment of the left camp meme. Uh, Bird Up says, I can't believe I'm having to report this on the news. Uh, you're not a news broadcaster, Don. You're a talking head. Brown Gaijin says, Matt reminds me of when Fox attacked Mass Effect. Uh, Jupiter Knight says, Matt Walsh, we gamers in anime, uh, uh, let's see, Atakus, uh, are some of the kindest, uh, nicest people but we are also the biggest talkers and take our stuff seriously. Brian Lati, 
Who is more gay, Dan or Don? Maybe they could have uh, been called D&D. Uh, Dan Vask. Yeah, Dan Vask is still gayer than Don Lemon. That's just the truth. Sorry. It's just it. So, um, B. Carswell says, Dan Vask has super, super chat to cost Jeremy money. Um, Shadow Say it says, I'm really disappointed with Battlefield or Battlefront uh, collection, uh, but I'm still holding out hope it can be fixed. Hope so. I hope so. Um, B. Carswell says, I picked up a lot of 16-year-old uh, girls sneaking out back in my day when I was in high school. I was wondering where the hell that was going, uh, B. Carswell. Jeez. Careful on the super chats, bro. Uh, Nate Houstman says, oh, uh, lots of pastors are bad role models. Uh, modern day, uh, let me see, Farsis. Darth Racer says, uh, the redheaded gal is like the Lot's wife turning back to look at uh, Sodom and was turned into salt. Aurora Uplink says she is calling her family evil. I don't trust her. Jake CB says you should ask Drex about the ho to Christian chick phenomenon. Uh, Alan Tanassi. Well, the whole thing is, is like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I, there are certain, like, I think that I'm always going to be as honest as I possibly can with the audience and the people that have given me the platform that I have. Okay. That's just absolutely me. This is just me though. This is how I operate. Okay. I'm always going to be honest and transparent as I possibly can with the audience, with the people that support Geeks and Gamers, with the people that support this show and all of that. There are still things that are 100% part of my private life that will always remain part of my private life that are not part of my internet life. And when I see people constantly talking to the internet about their private life, and it's a drastic change or something like I question it. I'm like, I don't understand why you're doing that. Like, let's say this girl did turn her life around and she's found the Lord. Why do you need now? Maybe you feel that you need to maybe put the positive out there to balance out all the negative that you feel you've put out there. I don't know, but I don't really understand that. Like, it just feels performative to me. And maybe that's just me, but. There's got to be things that no matter how public you are on the internet, no matter how many followers you have, there still has to be things that are reserved for your private life and your personal life. There's still like whatever that is that you just have to in order to function in life. And that's what I, that's the way I carry it. Now, maybe it's because I'm older and I've been through life and I've been through experiences and a lot of these younger people that blow up on the internet they feel that the internet has to know every aspect of their life. And, and I'm totally aware that that might just be a generational thing for me. Um, but it just feels weird, man. Uh, like there was a video of her, um, like she was like laid back, she was closing her eyes and she's like how it feels to finally like be free or something like that. Or I don't know, give your life to the Lord. And she has this video of like recording herself I'm just like, that's not natural, and that's not normal. But, you know, it is what it is. BPMS says, you do the same thing. What do you mean I do the same thing? Oh, wait, is BPMS, one of, like, is this a person that doesn't like me? BPMS 1200, is that it? BPMS, is that the person, is this one of the people that hates me in the chat? I can't remember. Uh, BPMS, is that a hater chat? I do the same thing. What do you mean I do the same thing, though, BPMS? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Yes? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, it just caught my eye as it was going by, and uh, I shouldn't have given him that attention. Oh, well. I tend to have a plan when I give a hater some attention. I didn't have the plan worked out. I was genuinely asking, thinking you were here, like, in actual good faith, asking me a question, but... We'll go back to ignoring you and keep typing. And if you type harder, like if you hit the keyboard harder, then I might hear it. Okay, so just type as hard as you can. Okay, angry, stay angry. Type really, really hard. Okay, uh, he can't stand. Uh, he can't, can't stand you. Yeah, I remember that name a while back. So, Alan Thanasi says, I know people uh, who have uh, been saved. That red hair girl is not saved. Trust me, 1,000%. B. Carswell says, uh, she's an amateur grifter, not a king like you. <laughs> not a, 
I wish I wish I was king. Um, Darth Chaz, uh, I don't even know uh, what that says, but thank you for the hashtag. Uh, default says, uh, if she were s uh, truly sincere, her OnlyFans would be gone. Big Gay Dave says, I grew up Presbyterian. Um, I was an escort. I became um, Angelican. It does happen. She switched uh, denominations is all. So there's a song by Randy Travis. It's called Three Wooden Crosses. Um, some of you probably are aware of that song. If you have not heard Three Wooden Crosses, it give it, the song actually does move me when I listen to it. Three Wooden Crosses Crosses is incredible. All right, it 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 does like it really does move me when I hear that song. It's it's absolutely uh, incredible. So if you have not heard it, listen to it, and that kind of leans into what you said in your super chat about that. So. Um, what did I say? Angelican? What did I say? Did I mess it up? But yeah, it's a fantastic song. Um, that one, and then there's another one by John Michael Montgomery called The Little Girl, and that one is incredible as well. Uh, those are some really good songs, and they, they will. like. I don't care if you like country music or not. Those two songs, regardless if you like country or not, especially Three Wooden Crosses has like a story behind it. You got to listen to every word. All right, you got to listen to every single word. Fantastic stuff. Um, so, let me see. Phantom is lying. What is MCU fan whining for? I'm from Alabama, so, you know, if I messed up a word, I, you know, I'm, I am retarded. We know that. Everybody that watches me consistently knows I'm retarded. So, um, let's see. Sarah for five says, uh, women use God as a shield to deflect possible shame from others, not as, uh, authority governing guilt like men. It's why women, uh, shouldn't be clergy. Default says, uh, he sounds like LeBron with the Malcolm X book. Uh, SBZ says Trump knows the Bible, uh, just like Gary knows Zelda. <laughs> Eric K says, uh, I will not super chat Jeremy. Oh, wait. Zach Gibson says, Jeremy wouldn't last 10 seconds in my... What? Jeremy wouldn't last 10 seconds in my mouth because he's so gay. Hail the 199. What the fuck? Uh, Kenny Justice is super late, but I've uh, but I've been such uh, a pissed off mood about Matt washed up. Uh, to see he doubled down was so frustrating. You and everyone on FNT unite, he divides. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, don't, be don't be too mad about the Matt Walsh situation. Like, at the end of the day... You know, it is what it is, man. I mean, uh, Matt, Matt's going to do what Matt's going to do. Can't really control that, but uh, we're going to continue to move forward. Let's see here. I wasn't prepared for that one. Lover of Green is in the house for $10. It says, here's a hot take. Uh, Blabs from Side Scrollers is cuter than Krista. Blabs can sing for $100 and can host podcasts without no man. MCU fan. Uh, and his bro, Dom, aren't the only simps in town. God bless the 199. Well, thank you, lover of green. Appreciate that. Um, Quentin Daniels for $30.99 says, uh, got flights and car uh, hire uh, booked forever. Vegas, um, be both be at both film, thre film threat and Gary's uh, nights in Vegas with my mate three weeks in. Uh, from Australia. Brother, let's go. You're coming from Australia to the FNT meetup? Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Okay, that is massive respect. Massive respect. That's crazy. Um, well, I appreciate that, and we are all going to appreciate that. That is super, super cool, man. That's crazy. Let me make sure I'm caught up there. I've still got so much to do. Glee Man for 10 says, The Southern Baptist upbringing uh, wants to correct everyone. It's 66 books of the Bible, not one. Also, Genesis and Gospels are my favorite books. Hail the one nine, or hail the chat, and God is MAGA. Let's go. Thank you. Man, you guys are crazy tonight, as usual. And, of course, we appreciate that. Uh, AD Victorium says, uh, How much rigs... Would a rigger rig if a rigger could rig rigs? A rigger would rig as much rigs as a rigger could rig if a rigger could rig rigs. Whew. 
You made me do that for five fucking dollars. You made me do that for five fucking dollars. I haven't been that nervous since fuck if I know. Holy shit. Um, Ackle P2 says uh, it isn't much, uh, but for a few miles of gas to get you and the team to Vegas. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. Slain Hope says I don't get uh, people who think they are so special that they will be the ones to die in a plane crash. Uh, more people die on wet roads or kitchen accidents. Um, yeah, no, I get it. Statistically speaking, um, you know, plane uh, tr flying is the the safest way to. Uh, I know all that stuff. I, I like driving and, uh, just to be as transparent as I can, I'm kind of a control freak. Uh, I like to be in control. I, I don't like to ride in a car with anyone. I like to be the drive. I like to drive. My hands need to be on the wheel. I need to be in control of the situation. And, um, I feel very, very, uh, I guess I get, I don't really have, I, I don't get anxiety really. It's not really my thing. But when I'm not in control of the situation, I get anxiety, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So um, that's just me. That's just me. That's how I'm built. And uh, I, I don't like the idea of being in a plane 30,000 feet above and not knowing who the pilot is or not knowing. Like, I don't even like uh, until I um, get to like if there's a local place that I kind of get to know, then I'm OK with it. But at first, if it's just a random place, I don't like going through drive throughs And the reason I don't like going through drive throughs in random restaurants is because I don't know the restaurant and I don't know the clientele. I don't know what the place is. So I like to go in and see to just kind of get an idea for what type of atmosphere we have going on. And trust me, there's been many a times if I'm traveling and I walk into a restaurant and I'm like, Everybody's standing around. No one is like, no one has any gloves on. They're, you know, it's like cutting up and everything. I turn around and walk out. I'm like, nope, done. So I don't like driving up to a random restaurant that goes to the drive through until I've established what type of clientele am I getting? What type of, what type of atmosphere is going on here? You know, and that's why Chick-fil-A is always, always the easiest place to go to when you're traveling because Chick-fil-A's are run properly. They always, always are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you go. You're always going to have a relatively good experience from a customer service standpoint at Chick-fil-A. Almost every time. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I've had a bad experience at Chick-fil-A. That's just the truth of it. We just got a... $50 super chat um, from uh, Heavy Metal. 50 says D-Day Cobra, my ninja. Whew. That was a little bit easier than the $5 one that I had to say a lot of gamer words or potential gamer words, okay? But thank you for the $50 super chat. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You guys are crazy. Um, mm -mm -mm. All right. Still got more to go. Zeke the Wise says, can brother Jeremy Osteen bless this chat tonight and more Sydney Sweeney, please. Well, Jeremy Osteen is feeling pretty good tonight. It's been a good night for the Super Chats. Not a great night yet, but a good night indeed. Jeremy Osteen is willing to bless this chat with all types of wamins. So wamin to all of you. Jeremy Osteen is so stupid. East Coast Toasted Voices, don't let him fool you. Uh, you're the fig king. Contemporary Compendium says, uh, let's see, uh, the song, um, uh, is it Golgotha from Wasp hits me hard. It's uh, about Christ's sacrifice on the cross. The vocalist redacted his life to God and made this album. I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Um Kenny, I don't think I have. Uh, Kenny Justice says, uh, called anime fans, devil worshippers, uh, people, yes. Yeah, so he called, uh, took back, but never forget uh, that it's especially when Christianity made Jesus a super Saiyan. Um, East Coast Toast Boy says, five bucks is five bucks. Jeremy, maybe, maybe. 
Jupiter Knight says, Jeremy, it's Brotherhood of Steel. AD Victorium. Thank you, Jupiter Knight. Um, all right, I got member messages to read. Holy shit. Cerberus with five. Wait, is that 10? Did you drop 10 gifted memberships? Cerberus, you crazy, crazy, crazy person, which I appreciate. 10 gifted memberships. Lying dog face pony soldier with a gifted membership. Thank you, crazy clown town. Says uh, MCU fan is Jeremy's uh Jeremy, MCU fan is Jeremy's fig and Krista's main simp. Um Johnny the Wiz Kid says, by the way, I was at the 199 podcast last night, but the poll you posted about you shaving. I favor the shaving just to see OG Jeremy once more. Yeah, uh the poll was like seven seventy percent to keep it. So there you go. B Barrett says, What happens when Jeremy's social battery is fully charged? He goes Super Saiyan and becomes Jeremy Osteen. Uh, B. Barrett says, keep grifting off Sydney Sweeney. I don't mind. Uh, Mark of Reality says, hook me up with Sydney Sweeney. Oh, yeah, it's true love. Dark Rays, Brie Vision. Brie Larson has more swag than Sydney Sweeney. Brie doesn't hang out with dudes in dresses. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm still going with Sydney Sweeney. Uh, Hans Gruber, welcome to the snake pit. Um, Atheist Icon says, thanks for the figs for 11 months. You guys are awesome. Uh, Johnny Wizkid says that Don Lemon reaction was funny. He either takes a shit too seriously or he doesn't take reality seriously. Not only are memes funny, but that power, but if that power were real, uh, the dim warmongers deserve it all. Johnny Wizkid says Dr. Steve Turley has become a uh, black pill due to the Fanny case decision. Despite the good news of having more people on Trump's side, I feel like uh, he could use some cheering up. Anything you can say? Um, well, I mean, Ultimately, and I haven't been able to spend a lot of time on that tonight because we've been we've had so many topics going on. But like, dude, I just think that the Fannie Willis case with that decision today, um, that's just what is what has Trump ultimately thrived off of in the last six months? It's the it's the establishment being against him. It's um, everybody. It's the witch hunt. And he's been talking about the witch hunt for forever. But the witch hunt is now taking it to another level with all the stuff that they're doing. So I just think the Fannie Willis case and the decision that's been made is only going to make him stronger. It's only going to add to the support that Trump is getting. He's already dominating in the polls. Do you think this is going to hurt him by this? No, it's only going to help him. That's only going to help him. So I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I really don't. Marlo says, thanks for the gifties, Figs. A recommendation to drive traffic uh, to the Geeks Gamers website by doing a meme review on top upvoted from the website, maybe weekly. I'm actually okay with that. That's actually not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. And again, that, that's the whole thing. If you go over to geeksandgamers.com, and again, I just, so again, I talked, I didn't talk about it a lot, but you know, our website right here, and I, I have like the dark mode on. So it kind of, let me see if I can switch away from dark mode for a second. Can I turn dark reader off? Uh, Okay, so it slightly changes the color just a little bit so you can kind of see. But, yeah, we have the forums over there. And, you know, as I talked about earlier, like, we have the forums. They're very – I think they're pretty active, especially you can go into the forums and we have the general discussion. We have the current events. We have memes or life. There's 18,000 posts and memes or life. 18,000 posts. My goodness, current events is where you discuss politics, social, and news here, general discussions. Now, just understand, I, I, as much as I personally think for it's free speech should be like, it should just be a free-for-all, you can say whatever you want, we have to operate with like in certain rules too. I kind of go by certain things like we can't do threats, we can't do doxing, we can't do uh, a lot of horrible things like that. I'm not going to let people just spam the N word on my website because all that's going to be do is used against me on YouTube or other platforms. We're trying to get an app developed eventually that's going to be in the Apple and Android store. All that shit goes into it. And that's just the unfortunate reality. And that's what Elon Musk has to say. Like, I, it's not a fucking, uh, you're not, you can believe in free speech, but don't say that Twitter is a free speech fucking platform. You know what I mean? And, and, and to be honest, like you're kind of fucking insane. If you don't understand that perspective, like if somebody's going to tell me, Jeremy, you're not going to let me drop the N word constantly on your website. Why is that necessary other than to make things give me a headache? Cause that's really all that it's meant to do is give me a fucking headache. 
Um, so no, that's not going to be something we're just going to let fly on the website. It's fucking retarded. Um, and so, uh, you know, but little things like that, but go over there, have discussions, talk about whatever. I don't give a shit. Just keep it within reason. It's all I've ever asked. And, uh, we have to continue to do that because we're trying to, you know, we don't want to be shut down. And that's what I say on YouTube. People are like, oh, you're like with, with, uh, you know, different creators or stuff like YouTube has rules. I don't make fucking YouTube rules. I don't make big text rules. I don't like them, but we have to operate within the, the, the rules that are put in front of us, and that's just the reality of the situation. Zach Gibson with a D-Day Cobra membership. Thank you. Josh Johnson with a D-Day Cobra membership. Thank you. Um, Jupiter Knight says it's not AD. It's pronounced ad. Oh, so ad vitorium. Okay, my bad. I'm retarded. What do you expect? The Exalted Patriarch says FNT was awesome. Hail God Emperor Trump 45. Uh, whoever said Matt Walsh is a chode uh, made me howl. Hail. Hail. Or they cancel you like Alex Jones. Yes. Yes. 100%. Um, Master Bader with a gifted membership. That's two gifted memberships right there. A feline. Oh, that's three gifted memberships. Josh Johnson with five gifted memberships. A feline name. But JJ says Jeremy is higher maintenance uh, than a you go on a road trip. This restaurant doesn't have a good vibe. No. Hey. It is what it is. I got standards for my food. All right. Um, East Coast Toast Boy says, Jeremy, my knee. <laughs> Jeremy, my knee. And then he puts a space. I almost fucking said it. I almost said it. <laughs> I almost said it. <laughs> I uh, puts a uh, ga my knee and then he has a space <laughs> he says it a bunch of times god damn it uh, almost said it lying dog face pony soldier with the gift of membership thank you uh fucking hell you almost got me on that one you almost <laughs> I did not the way you spelled it you fuck holy shit it almost got me it almost fucking got me all right, let me turn this dark reader back on. Here we go. All right. That was funny as hell, man. Um, Chris Rose gifted a D-Day cover membership. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris Rose became a member as well. Johnny Whiskers says, Elon uh, should recruit the next news network. Gary would probably love the opportunity, especially his demonetization problem. Um, Johnny Whiskers says, Mama likes Cuomo and doesn't understand why he or Don are horrible people when they're just commentators. I don't know how you explain to her. Can you detail as much as uh, you can of his crime? She doesn't follow the truth. Well, I mean, he lied about his COVID lockdown. There's videos of that. Uh, he assaulted a man during um, the pandemic when everything was shut down. Um, his brother, you can look and see what his brother did and uh, to all the old people in New York, and then he used his platform to support that. Chris Cuomo is, honestly, Chris Cuomo's worse than Don Lemon. Just be, If we're just being honest about it, like Chris Cuomo is worse than Don Lemon. I mean, he just is. Like, Don Lemon's a piece of shit. Chris Cuomo is worse than Don Lemon. Look up what he's done. Like, he's a liar. He's a manipulator. He's a piece of shit. He just is. Uh, Rob Morgan says, There was only one man uh, that was without flaws, but sadly, Ben doesn't recognize him. Malty Maldi says, The establishment is on the right and still preaching party lines is one of the biggest reasons I became a right-leaning libertarian. Hail the 199. Thank you, Savvy. Let's see here. Savvy Sue with 10 gifted memberships. Holy crap. 10 gifted memberships. Uh, Roman says, uh, can't stop the Trump train, baby. Lying dog face pony soldier with two gifted memberships. Haas Von, Adventure, Haas Von uh, Butter Dutch says, uh, what the fuck is wrong with me? I've been paying for this shit for five months. Love the show, man. Hail the 199. Thank you. B. Barrett says, I'd just like to give a shout out to Night's Watch. Just stumbled upon his channel on Twitter in response to Matt's coverage of Sweet Baby Inc. Night's Watch is fantastic. Uh, Shad is great. Shad did a really great video talking about the Matt Walsh situation. I highly encourage everybody to go over there and check it out. Um, Night's Watch, they're great. Vault 95 says, uh, Jeremy, uh, bought Revenge of the Sith on PS2 so I could see how the movie was really supposed to go. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Could you tell the new members uh, that story here of yours? It's funny. What story is it? 
I think you're talking about Ryan. Ryan has a story about the Revenge of the Sith uh, video game on PS2. Yes, it's Ryan that has. So I, I love the Revenge of the Sith game. It's phenomenal. And it's a game that people don't talk about with Star Wars. But Ryan's got the funny story talking about the spoilers and everything like that. That's Ryan. Um, and we can get him to talk about that on uh, daily next week. But yeah, that's Ryan that's got the funny story. Um, but that game is very underrated. People do not talk about that game enough. Uh, but Ryan's one's got the funny story, and I, we can definitely get him to do that. Lord of the Reese says, Hail the Snake Pit, cleaning my guitars and changing strings while listening to the stream. But I just wanted to take a second uh, to do my part to help recharge your social battery. We'll see you later. Uh, while we're talking about my guitars, uh, my cover of Free Fallen has now uh, 1,500 views on Rumble, and I've got new stuff on the way. You can check it out at Long Walks Music here on Rumble. Congratulations, brother. That's awesome. Um, B Barrett says uh, Shapiro supported DeSantis. Quit talking nonsense. Next, you're going to try to tell me his wife is a doctor. PJ says he wasn't a fan of the tariffs on China, and he was a bit anxious about Trump going to North Korea. I think there were a couple of other little things, too. And, yeah, and there's no problem, like, with people having concerns about Trump or having issues with some of his policies, but they're so minimal. And I'm just like, that doesn't justify your, you know— your concerns with about Trump. It just doesn't. Zach Gibson says, I make some overly gay comments because I love the 199 and I'm in the Navy. Much love to my fellow in words. Uh, thank you, Zach Gibson. I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for your service. East Coast Toast Boy says, next time. It was close. Glee Man says, favorite chips, mine, salt, and vinegar. Either sour cream and onion or barbecue. Typically those two. Um, yeah, sour cream and onion or barbecue. I like Lay's sour cream and onion chips. And Ruffles used to have these barbecue chips that were just so fucking good, but I can't get them in Florida anymore. When I was on the West Coast, they used to have them. Like, there were some Ruffles barbecue chips, um, but I can't find them anymore. So I typically go with, like, the um, honey barbecue Lay's. Uh, but, yeah, barbecue and sour cream and onion. Those are my two chips. Um... Let's see. Just to do it on a phone says, Jeremy, my uh, knee uh, grows. Uh, there we go. Uh, clandestine says, thanks for speaking out on all the lies these days. Media is so fake and um, hackery. Uh, Grace, like you and Ryan have our back, though. Respect. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Piano Dean says, there is only one thing worse than finding a worm in your apple. Finding a snake, unless it's a D-Day Cobra. Booyah! 199 is so fine. Hey, Mickey. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, look, that's what we're trying to do. Going back to the, you know, thanks for, you know, what we're doing, or thanks for speaking out, like, everything with the media and stuff. I do not consider, I am not a journalist. I've never wanted to be a journalist uh i'm not trying to necessarily make geeksandgamers.com a journalism site as much as i'm trying to just make it a place where people can voice their opinions we're obviously going to have people that have you know we're going to bring writers on and we're going to you know obviously have a certain standard there but you know um it is what it is man i just i there's too much bullshit out there and uh, we're just at a point in time where we just need people to give honest opinions and uh, honest thoughts about shit and whatever those opinions are. So be it, but it's, it's a weird place. Um, so, uh, hi jet says, um, got gifted frick. Yeah. Thanks. Pony soldier. Uh, keep up the good fight. Everyone. That's awesome. Lying dog face pony soldier. Um, Paul B for the one nine nine. Thank you. Vault 95 says scanning in, um, Johnny Wicks says, I know how frustrating it is to have conservatives uh, defend pop culture. That's why I asked Dr. Steve Turley his take on Matt's comments on an anime. Remember that video? He's on our side. Yeah, I like Dr. Steve. He's pretty cool. He's super cool. Um, and we are now, ladies and gentlemen, look at Savvy Sue again. Savvy Sue drops 10 more gifted memberships. What is happening? Holy crap. 10 more gifted memberships from Savvy Freaking Sue. Wow. Cheez Its are your favorite, Tom McD. Cheez Its are awesome. Uh, Jay Hellstone says, Don't play Health Ivers 2. You will hate it. I'm going to play it probably tomorrow night. If you're not subscribed to my D Day Cobra 199 channel, um, you should. Because that is where we are going to be playing Hell Divers tomorrow. Or at least I am, anyway, from my perspective. So let's. Should I set the event up now, Hellstorm, to force me to have to play it tomorrow? 
you know what? That's what I'm going to do right now, Hailstorm. Okay, we're, we're gonna we're gonna set it up right now. I'll set the event up tomorrow, and I'll raid. I'll make. Uh, I'll have everybody raid. Uh, I'll raid that live stream, and people can continue the discussion. Uh, Sally Ito has dropped five gifted memberships. What is happening right now? What is happening right now? Um, so let me see if, I, and I'll probably get like an updated thumbnail later, but we'll just use this one for now. So, um, okay. Save, 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 save. Okay. So right there, I'm setting it up right now. So we will just raid this one. Okay. Switch account. So tomorrow night we're playing hell divers. Everybody's been telling me about this and I'll, I'll show you guys something really quick, okay? I'll show you guys something. This is why I'm going to play Hell Divers, uh, uh, among other reasons, okay? Hell Divers 2. Um, get this. I'll show you why. And this, this actually, this post was crazy yesterday, too, that I posted. So look at this really quick. Um, well, let me get this event set up first, and then we'll do it. But I posted about what their um, developers did. So we're going to have to do this for tomorrow night, March 16th. So that's tonight. I guess we'll go for, I don't know, maybe 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Hailstorms, that sound good? May have to alter that a little bit. And then we will raid that stream. Okay, and we can continue the discussion over there if you guys want to. Um, the stream's not going to be up for a while, clearly. But I want to show you why I want to play, among other reasons. This is one of the... <laughs> Main reasons I want to play Helldivers 2 right here. Let's go over to my Twitter account. Let's go to desktop view. All right. By the way, look who retweeted the, the Ripaverse. Slash. Slash retweeted the Sasuke sisters. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Slash of Guns N' Roses retweeted the Sasuke sisters for the Ripaverse Yaira campaign. Holy shit. Freaking Slash, okay? <laughs> That's insane, dude. Slash, the legend. I mean, I still can't believe that. That is crazy. All right. Uh, let me go back here. Let me find it really quickly. By the way, did you guys see this story? I'm uploading a video on Geeks and Gamers later, later about this, okay? I'm uploading a video about this. Let's just say... They got a transgender voice actor to, to do the voice work for this character. And then the transgender actor found out that it was this character. And they're very, 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 very upset. And they're looking for reparations now. Yeah, that'll be uploaded to Geeks and Gamers very soon. Uh, let's see where we're at. I did a lot of retweeting yesterday. So give me a minute. Let me find this. Right here. There we go. Okay. This is Helldivers. LGBTQ plus activists accuse Helldivers 2 developers of silencing them after they attempted to push propaganda into game. Numerous LGBTQ plus activists are accusing Helldivers 2 of attempting to silence them after they attempted to... Oh, that was just where I read the whole thing. So right there. Yeah. So we're going to be playing some Helldivers 2 tomorrow night on my D-Day Cobra channel. All right, um, everybody's been talking about this, and uh, that I'm really excited. I'm really excited to uh, to play and to see what you guys think. It'll be my first time playing. Hailstorm will be there. Um, I'm sure we can get like some other people up in there, um, and it will be a lot of fun. Let me um, let me see here. We still got. Are, are we gonna get the sexy back end? Are we going to get to sexy back end? It looks like we are close but not there yet so are we going to get there we are 1427 likes so that means we need 73 new likes uh jay's traveling so jay's not going to be there beardo i could probably get beardo um so jay's traveling right now um zach gibson says uh hell divers 2 is badass bro you'll love it everybody's been saying it man um <coughs> you will be gifting memberships Says BFSD. Um, Cerberus with a D-Day Cobra membership. Thank you. Paul B says, uh, shout out to... <laughs> it's 
Shout out to my dog. Um, and then he brings up a, a candy bar called uh, <laughs> like a snicker bar. Okay. So God damn you guys. I hate you. I love you and I hate you at the same time. Aurora Uplinks says, um, uh, I sent a, I sent a studio information on the Sasuke sisters. I thought if they want to have women creators for DEI, why not? Uh, let's see, have ones, uh, who make media that fans like, that's a good decision. That's a good decision. Uh, you guys don't understand almost every fucking super chat that I read. I'm like reading ahead to make sure there's not a gamer word that I'm walking right into. Funny story, back when I first started streaming, some guy comes in my chat and he's telling me like he has a, f well, here, I'll tell you, this. I'll show you, I'll just show you, okay? Uh, um, hang on. Let's see here. Hey, Jeremy, don't yes. forget the uh, poll also. Okay, got you. All right, here we go. So uh, there's a, there's an NBA uh, head coach named Steve Kerr, okay? And he has a son, all right? This is his son, all right? And somebody comes in the chat, and they're like, hey, Jeremy, it's my buddy's birthday. He would love if you wished him a happy birthday. His name is Nick. And uh, I just said it so fast, like five times, all right? I just said it so fast. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, Nick, it's, it's happy birthday. And I said it like four times. I can't believe nobody clipped it. And after the fourth time I said it, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oops. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that happened. So now, like, literally every fucking, like, every single super chat that I read, I'm just like, are they trying to make me say, um, well, I didn't, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Um, so his dad is woke too, kind of odd. It is, it is. Um, all right. So the poll was supposed to be party animals or Fortnite. Um, I already know what's going to win. I already know what's going to win this poll. So what game would you rather see us play? Party Animals or Fortnite? I was supposed to do this on Geeks and Gamers Daily, and I forgot. So we're doing it right here. But what would you rather see the crew play? Um, we are 15 likes from 1,500, ladies and gentlemen. 15 likes from 1,500. Uh, Party Animals is out to an early lead. Party Animals is out to an early, early lead. Uh, and we are closing in. We need 12 more likes. Warren Smith, what's up? Warren Smith. Wow. You give a transgender voice actor a job to be represented in games, and when they get it, complains about it? So selfish. Um, their knee uh, <laughs> uh, grows uh, wide. Oh, God damn you guys. I swear. <laughs> just, Y'all are just killing me. Flag Ninja says, I've been considering changing my YouTube name to. Tony. Uh, gr grows. <laughs> what do you think? God. Uh... <laughs> uh... You know what? I think we got to pull up a video really quick. We got to pull up a video. We got to pull up a video. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Is this going to be muted right here? Okay. Uh, Trump. Eh. All right. Here we go. Is this it right here? Let's see. I think this is it. Uh, there was one. I got to find it. Yeah, here it is. All right, here we go. <laughs> Just trying to change the subject so you guys will quit making me try to say a gamer word. We all remember this one. And as much as you want to put them in our jails, they were probably sent here so that we put them in our jails. Because to put them in our jails, they didn't pay the electric bill. To put them... Oh, I like that much better. Oh.
Oh, that's so much better. Those lights were brutal. Are they come from the dishonest press? Where? Oh, don't turn them off. Forget it. Better, right? Don't turn them off. Don't turn the lights on. Plus, we save on electricity, right? And because the lights didn't work, I won't pay the rent. So we get better lighting and we don't pay the rent, right? Right? No, get those lights off. Off. Turn them off. They're too, they're too bright. Turn them off. Turn them off. Let's go. Ready? Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Turn them off. <laughs> so much nicer. No, no, that's the way we have to negotiate for our country. Think of it. That's the way we have to. That's the way my son negotiates. That's the way Jared negotiates. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, <laughs> Eric, come here. Jared, come here. That's the way we have to negotiate for our country. The lights go off. Now listen, come here. Ready? Now listen, there's just the thing. The lights go off, it's better. We say we want the lights on, it's terrible, it's terrible. We take a big deduction off the rent because the lights are, but it's actually better. It's the kind of sick thinking we really need for our country. Isn't that right? <laughs> so because the lights didn't work, even though it's better, we say we're not paying the rent. The lights didn't work. This is ridiculous. We will not pay the rent. And we say bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking showman, dude. What an absolute showman. Oh, he's so damn funny, dude. I swear. Holy crap. Um, all right. So let me see where we're at. All right, where, what's the poll at? Party animals winning overwhelmingly. I knew that was going to happen, by the way. I knew that was going to happen. So no doubt about that. I knew it. Um, did I mess up? Oh, I messed up the fucking title of the fucking uh, stream. I didn't type it in correctly. So now I've got to do that. Is it going to let me? Hell... Ivers 2, save. Okay, there we got it. Okay, now, um, where are we at? I got so much going on. We're over 1,500 likes, so you know what that time it is. You know what time it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for sexy, sexy back end. All right, it's time for the sexy back end. And as a, as a, as a thank you to all of you, I got a gift for all of you, okay? I've got a gift for all of you. All right. There you go. All right. There's a gift for all of you right there. Okay. Wonderful gift for all of you. Thank you for all of your support. We appreciate it very, very much. And of course, now it's time for the sexy back end. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. $805.80. And 82 new members. 82. You guys have been on fire tonight. So thank you so freaking much. Really appreciate all the support. Um, it's been a, a really good night as uh, usual. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Willie freaking Will. Willy freaking Will. Holy crap. Woo! Thank you, brother. And says nothing. A proper 199 takes us to the threshold of $1,000 in chat revenue. And that's not even including Rumble, by the way. Not even including Rumble. Wow. So that I wasn't even going to grift off that. I mean, obviously, I was like, hey, we're less than $200 from, you know, $1,000. I wasn't even going to grift off of it. I wasn't going to do it. That's amazing. Thank you, freaking Willie Will. Yes, respect, Willie Will, says Lance Finn. Jeez. I, just... I want everybody to know that if you want to do something like anything, whatever it is, go out there and do it. Like, again, 
just a few years ago, man. I'll never stop telling this story. I was watching YouTubers. I, I'll, there's a guy. There's a guy that's like a, a tech YouTuber. And when he hit 20,000 subscribers, I remember watching him when I was in, you know, I don't know. I, I have no idea if this guy still does YouTube or not. But when I was watching him, and he wasn't like any, like, he wasn't like a fancy, you know, tech YouTuber or nothing. He's just like really kind of like grassroots. And he hit 20,000 uh, subscribers. And this is before I had a YouTube channel. And I just kept saying, like, how do you get 20,000 subscribers? How does that happen? And I just couldn't, I couldn't comprehend what it would feel like to have 20,000 subscribers. I was like, wow, he got 20,000 people to subscribe to his channel. It's got to be the best feeling in the world. And... I never thought that that was something I could accomplish. I never in a million years thought I could get 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I saw you, Willie Will. You said uh, you're just checking in, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. And he says, hail chat. Hail chat. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sitting here. And uh, obviously, we've done really well with Geeks and Gamers and D-Day Cobra and all the other channels we have. And I'm very thankful to be part of things like Friday Night Tights and having the website and the team we have. And I've just done it on pure passion and uh, gut instincts, really. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just a, an average dude with, I think I've got a, a relatively good, um, I, I think I can surround myself with pretty good people and pretty smart people. And that's what I've tried to do is surround myself with smart people. Cerberus with the gifted membership. Thank you, Cerberus. Uh, try to, I uh, try to, Try to surround myself with with smart people, smarter than myself, which isn't that hard to find. Um, but I guess at the, at my core, I am a leader. I always have been a leader. And uh, but yeah, if you want to, if you're trying to go out there and build something, don't hesitate. Fear is the only thing that can hold you back. Um, there ain't a person on this planet that doesn't get made fun of. There ain't a person on this planet that doesn't get roasted for something. Uh, people every day are saying shit about me on the internet, uh, calling me names, uh, saying I'm this, saying I'm that, uh, and it happens to literally every other person that's on the internet. And don't let that fear hold you back of doing what you want to do because I promise you that no matter what your fear is, uh, you're, if, if you will be able to overcome it for sure, 1,000%. And typically, you are your own worst uh, critic as well. You really are. Like when we look in the mirror, we think worse of ourselves than almost anyone else probably does because we see every flaw and we see everything that's wrong and we think that everyone else sees that but they really don't um well occasionally the internet does uh trust me i know uh but you know it is what it is but thank you guys so much for allowing me the opportunity to do this i appreciate it and i know i'm lucky to be in the position i'm in and i will never stop being thankful for that and for all of you so really appreciate it I work for the people, and that's it, and uh, that's uh, that's how it should be, and that's how I want it to continue to be. So thank you. Uh, Let's talk game says most people just call Jeremy gay. Yeah, not as much as uh, Dan Vask, but they do call me that. Um, okay, so we're gonna have Sabaton send us out, and then if you want to continue the discussion, you can go over to my D Day Cobra One Nine Nine channel. And even though I'm not gonna be live until tomorrow night. You can at least continue the discussion. If you guys like talking in the chat, like hanging out, uh, you can go over there and do it. And, uh, you know, it's just a place to hang out and have some fun. And I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say over there. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Have a good night, and we will talk to all of you later. Bye, everyone.
All right, guys, thank you so very much. We appreciate all of you. So again, this stream will end and it will raid the uh, D-Day Cobra 199 channel. I'm honestly thinking about changing. Hailstorm, are you here? I'm I'm honestly thinking yeah. about changing that back to Cobra 199. I I like Cobra 199 better than D-Day Cobra 199. Oh my God, you're like a woman. Ah, fuck you. Anyway, I I, I don't know. Poll in the chat. I, I'll poll the chat over on that channel, and and let's see what they say. Okay. Um, let me start a poll. Uh, do you like so D-Day Cobra? Um. 199 or Cobra 199. Let's see what they say. Because I, I think Cobra 199 kind of flows better. Um, start the poll. Will it let me? Okay, so it's it's over there now. So this is going to raid everybody over there. You got to go vote in the poll. What do you want the name of the channel to be? Let me know. I love you all. Have a great night. Talk to all of you later. Bye, everyone.